All right. Here we are then. Ho oh, oh. ho. Oh. Scorpio Rising, Death in Vegas, on XFM 104.9. About five past one, Saturday. Here we are again then. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. <laughs> I can't believe our luck. <laughs> oh. All right, Carl. All right. Yeah, so what are we doing today then? Producer. <laughs> right. <we're laughs> <gonna do that. laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I always laugh instinctively when I hear Carl's name and that word. Yeah. Associated. Right, well, why is that? Because it is, I, I had to come up with some new features again for this new year. Okay. I'm excited. What have you come up with? Paul. We, oh. we, we are the backbone of this show, Carl. Yeah. We're gonna, we're tell, we're tell you we've come up with some pretty, what's yours first? Right. Go on. Right, well, Rockbusters. That's old, that's not a new feature. Yeah, but we'll keep it. Right. For another, for so another you're bit. just keeping an old feature. Okay, okay. okay. Now it's an old favourite. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are going, phew, I was worried that he'd lose Rockbusters. Rick, I've just come up with a new idea. Why don't we just play some records that we like? There's a new idea for 2003. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what we can't, Steve? Because the library's out of order. Oh yeah, the record library, we can't get in there. We're we, not allowed to get in there. We had to scroll some from Capital Gold. So anyway. Right. Go on. So we got Rockbusters. What are they doing with the library? Are they put getting some records in that we want to <laughs> play? Is that their new idea? I know. Let's get some records in. Yeah, they're they thinning play. out the, uh, the Gina G. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Four non blondes, goodbye. <laughs> Give that to Foxy. Go on, so sorry, Carl. We'll do, um, <laughs> we started Do We Need Em in 2002. Do We Need Em? Do We Need Em? Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll got, continue that. Got a new one, haven't you? Explain that later. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and then the new stuff comes in. Ooh. Right. Um, as always, I like to sort of get words and tweak them and stuff. Sure. Yeah. So I was thinking of either doing something <laughs> with, um, there's a lot of weird rituals, <coughs> isn't there? A lot right? of weird rituals? Yeah. There's weird stuff going on around the world. Okay. There is, yeah. Um, and I was going to tweak that to Rick Chules. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Again, start with the title, the pun first, then working out what it is. <laughs> and well, then I found some weird stuff. Um, oh, right. So it's, it's specifically... Just stuff what? that goes on, like, um... Rituals. There was, uh... Most of the weird stuff I've heard about happened to you in Manchester. Yeah. In your early years. Well, in India, apparently it's good to have uh, a flat head. <laughs> so the, uh... <laughs> Again, just <laughs> flirting, just bordering on the racist, <laughs> yeah. but never really gets there. Always... Well, because well, there's no, there's no intent. There's no hate, there's no hate, it it's, does, just it's, clumsy, it's just clumsy, it's, yeah, it's just stupidity. Ignorant. Yeah. Exactly. Go on. What, Sorry, do, you so what, do, you what do you mean? mean what do you mean? It's good to have a flat What head? do you mean it's good to have a flat in India? We'll, we'll talk about it later. Brilliant. That's, that's rituals. So... <laughs> you've, you've, you've hooked a few people, you've hooked a few in. Go on. Alright, so I'll have that later. So, it's essentially like educating Ricky, only specifically about rituals. Is that... Is that, strictly speaking, what it is? Okay. I suppose so, but then again yeah. you could say radio is all the same because it's people talking. <laughs> okay, Carl, brilliant. Yeah, brilliant no, comeback. Yeah, so, brilliant comeback. Not all talking nonsense, though. Well... So that's where we're different. Go on. Um, also, right, I like teaching you stuff. Yeah. And you've done well. So what I'm, what I'm thinking is, rather than just touching on a topic, T sort of giving you a few bits of information on one See, topic. See, this is what I'd like to do, because the last thing you taught me, I remember, was there was a blind girl, she hit her head and she could see, and that's all I got. Yeah. So if you could go into that a little bit more, that would have been educating me. Well, today, we're featuring, uh, stuff on World War One and Two, Blimey. right? Oh, So that's, that's, uh, that little title for all this little thing is, uh, what do you think of that then? <laughs> 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 what do you think of that then? <laughs> Play a record. So that's Rick, that's can I have just thought of a joke? Go on. What's the similarity between Lord of the Rings and this show? They're both rubbish. <laughs> Watch What's that man, David Bowie off of Lad Insane, my favourite David Bowie album. What's yours, Carl? Yeah, that one. That one's good. <laughs> Brilliant. So, um, <laughs> right, we've got, um, Rockbusters coming up. Do you want to say what we've got to give away there, Steve? Not really, Rick. Is it really bad? Well... What's the film? What's the featured film? The featured film's not bad, I have to say, actually. You, you've excelled yourself there. Again, it's just one of those things where I think, what kind of XFM listener would want this particular goodie bag? I know before Christmas, Carl, you explained that the reason Look, we were Carl's giving face, away- Look, he's disgusted, cos he- he just said, I do a lot of work to get, to get these prizes, and I went, no you didn't. I saw you, he went over to a drawer and went, I'll give that one, that one, and that one. That's what work you put in. You nicked- you nicked some- there's about twelve Jerry Halliwell videos, one of which we're giving away. It's oh, really? like- Oh, you've given it away? Oh, no! Yeah, if you'd like, uh, Jerry Halliwell's, uh, body yoga, 
DVD, uh, then, you know, that's one of the treats you can win. Um, but it does it like, if you notice, if you remember before Christmas, he said that, um, he was giving away a kind of bumper pack of, uh, gifts that you might want to wrap up and oh, give to various people. Oh, one for uncle, one, one for uncle, yeah. one for auntie. But obviously Christmas has passed, so I don't know really what your well, excuse is this you time. Eat, you eat a lot over Christmas, don't you? Get a bit fat. Fair point. Yeah. So, um, uh, we, yeah, Jerry Body Yoga is one of them. Um, the recent, on DVD, the recent series of, of Weeders Ain't Pet. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that he... Could you give me that reaction again? Well, no, I just... No, just give me that reaction again. No. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. Um, and actually I have to say, this, this isn't bad at all. This is the uh, very best of the Stone Roses CD well, compilation. Well, you can't knock that. Which, uh, you can't knock that. In fact, I'll tell you what, we should, we should play Elephant Stone at some point. Yeah, today, play, it's yeah going we'll on. have that. Go on. Um, Madness. I think this is actually tunes from them and not from the musical, although it is uh, tied into he the musical. He went to see that musical. Really? Yeah, on New Year's, uh, you know what it's like on New Year's Day, there's nothing to do. Sure. So, so you go and see some people out. doing madness songs? No, I took Suzanne out for a walk, right? Yeah. Went round, um, Covent Garden. Right. <laughs> past the place where it was on. The stage door was open, you snuck <laughs> in. <laughs> well, I said madness are alright. And, because when you think about it, madness songs are quite sort of musical anyway, aren't they? So you can't- They're quite do musical. Do you know what I mean? They sort he of- He means they're oh, like, a musical, right, they're like yeah. a musical, yeah. Knees up Mother Brown. I thought yeah. it was alright, enjoyed it. So Blur, what, the, Blur the musical would be good, wouldn't it? Blur the musical would be excellent. Yeah, little so, um, cockney So what, you bought tickets there and then and just went in? No. They're not selling, are they? Um, <laughs> it, was fair, it was fairly quiet, cause no. we only paid the, the lower price and we got upgraded for free. Nice. So- You I enjoyed it, did you? I'd loved it. And I'd would say, anyone yeah. like to come on stage with us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the little bald fella. <laughs> yeah, go on, I'll give it a go. And what home are you from? Where are you- what are you doing tomorrow? Well, I'm going, well, I'm going, no, you're coming here tomorrow. <laughs> Come here tomorrow. Was it not, is it not doing well? That's a disappointment. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it was New Year's Day, so maybe that's why it was quiet. Okay, well, well if, uh, if anyone hasn't seen quiet. this or didn't receive it for As Christmas- Bono said, all is quiet on New Year's Day, Carl. Yeah. Um, <laughs> also we've got the giveaway, Minority Report by, uh- I like that, Steven I enjoyed Spielberg that. with, uh, Tom Cruise, um, which is on VHS. A good rip roaring sort of film, It's that. not bad. That's probably the best thing we're giving away, but, uh, as I say, we can always leave some out if you don't I'm want- I'm arresting you for the future murder of Sarah Marks. Yeah. Brilliant. That's the sort of uh, excitement and drama you'll be getting in it. It's not brand Little new. Little taster there. I did. I got that of Paul Anderson. He right. said there's something to watch over Christmas. So, so you've actually it. watched this already? Yeah. All right. I've oh. rewound it. That's probably added no, to it, though, isn't it? It's touched by the great man himself, yeah. Carl Pilkington. And it's all right, I'd say. It's worth worth a watch. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to give us a quick film review? Just give it a wipe down. There may be some tripe on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, bit unrealistic. Sure. A bit unrealistic. <laughs> yeah. Genius. <laughs> a man yeah. who can fi who finds people who can see into the future. Whereas our house, that really <laughs> happened. Yeah. God. Anyway, Play prizes are uh, giving away. What, what's the competition? It's Rockbusters. We're, we're doing Rockbusters. We're still doing Rockbusters. Oh, we'll, we'll look forward we'll to that. We'll do that in like 15 minutes. I need a bit of Coldplay first. I'm yeah. doing, honestly. Coldplay, The Scientist. I think they wrote that about Carl. Yes. Uh, yes. on XFM 104.9. Right. Uh, I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Can I just ask Carl how he got on over uh, Christmas? Because oh. the last time I spoke to him, you hadn't bought a present for your girlfriend. I, I have to say, I was on Tenterhooks all Christmas. Well, you changed it. Uh, after that show, I felt bad, even though I shouldn't have done, because- <laughs> Because I, you hadn't bought your girlfriend a Christmas present? Yeah, but present. I said to you, I booked a table at a hotel in Covent Garden, had Christmas dinner there, which was nice, right? Mm. It's good food and everything. Um, mm. Didn't feel like enough to me. Well, then I went out and treated some stuff, and then- No, no, no. The- a couple of days before Christmas, he went, uh, I took to Suzanne to that hotel we're gonna go to for Christmas dinner. We had tea and cakes. And I went, oh, you treated her? He went, no, she paid for it, but I was just showing her what it was gonna be like. <laughs> that was her extra treat. <laughs> she paid for it. I love that. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, it was a bit, it was like 150 quid for a meal for two, which is pretty dear. So I'm not gonna buy her cakes as well. <laughs> <laughs> I love that! Alright, love, have anything you want. You pay for your own pudding, I'm not mental. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, so yeah, you, but so you you did you treated her to some other yeah, stuff, some didn't? bits and bobs. What, and so you, she bought, she chose them, and you paid for them. What the presents? Yeah, no, or no. you chose them and she paid for them, but you know, it's, it's <laughs> the no, I, cans. I, I got them on the way home that Saturday. Well done. And what did you buy? Well, just some bits. Might be personal, Steve. Well, I don't care. Just some bits. Yeah, just but bits and bits. leave out the personal bits. What what bits? Uh, just little things. And then yesterday, right? A monkey wrench and a new washer for the shower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some recordable CDs <laughs> <laughs> that you need for your job. Oh so, dear. Uh, now, th now, when you gave those presents to her, did her fi face light up? Right. I don't want to tell you what they were, right, but she wasn't that impressed. 
<laughs> You're going to tell us what you they are now, us what they are. You even know what they are, she told you. On Christmas Day. Hold on, wait a minute. But right. it doesn't matter what they are. It does matter what they are. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It does, Carl, it's you, mate. It no, course it, it doesn't matters. matter. <laughs> oh, God! We just remembered. Yeah! Right, but don't, there's I've no got, need. I've got to tell him, Carl. I've, I, I really, I really want your permission because I don't want to be a, you know, I know it's not, but we know it's not that embarrassing. It's really quite sweet. Yeah, but in a way, right, <laughs> the way I look at it is, right, Christmas, even when I was a little kid, right, it's not- Please let me tell him, Carl. Well, let me just tell you first, now. Oh. Let me tell you why I didn't go all out on the okay. old present front. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Justify yourself. Right. Oh, first God. of all, I've covered it up since then anyway, right, with that present, because I bought her some shoes yesterday, and she did say I'll give you the money for them, but when I get home I said it's all right. <laughs> I said you can have them, right? <laughs> so, so, not only, not only did I buy her some food on Christmas Day, I got her shoes. She's probably had a table. And he's treating like yeah. a horse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not yeah. like, yeah, there you go, there's your shoes, there's your food, right. Bed yeah. down, yeah. see you later. Yeah, but uh, what I'm saying is I she's done- I fed and clothed Yeah, her. Did, you, did you comb her hair? She's done well this year, right? <laughs> uh, oh. So, the thing she's is- She's done well this year. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're a single parent and you've got a council estate with a smack problem. <laughs> and you still managed to buy them <laughs> some right. Lego. When Can I was I... a kid, right, oh, it God. wasn't about what you got. I remember one year when I was about eight, right? <laughs> oh, it's gonna make me cry, isn't it, this? It's no, good. it's not. I'm just Go saying on. the way it is, right? I woke up at about four in the morning and I was like, oh, what have I got? And I couldn't sleep. I was that on edge. Mm. It's the excitement of Christmas, isn't it? It's like, yeah. oh, what's wrapped up? I need to know. Sure. Yeah. And it's the fact that people are saying, no, you won't know until tomorrow. Yes. Sure. That annoys you and winds you up. Okay. So I got up at four in the morning, yeah. opened my presents, and then went, right, I know now, I went back to bed, had a great sleep. Yes. Right? So it's nothing to do with the excitement of what you get, it's the excitement of not knowing what you've got. And then what happened when you got up to go down with the so what you're, But hang on, so oh. what you're saying to me is that you could wrap up a brick because the thrill of Christmas is in hoping and it's being excited about what it is, not the actual gift itself. Yeah. Is that, is, is that what you did? That's Rick, <laughs> did, did you get a brick? No, let me tell you now what he got. He got her a present, right, and she said, she came and I said, uh, yeah, he got me. It was, it was an industrial sized packet of condoms. It was a joke gift. No, it, no, wasn't, it wasn't a, a joke, wasn't a joke. Gift. It wasn't even a joke. I mm. went home that Saturday after the year, past boots, <laughs> thought, might have something in here. They were on, like, some value. Right, you, you passed the well, makeup. Well, they used. <laughs> right, you passed anyway. the makeup, you passed all the other- yeah. Passed the makeup, stuff. passed the lovely vanity cases, yeah, yeah the foot spas, exactly. yeah, the yeah, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. How much are these, love, for hundred? <laughs> yeah. Four ninety-nine. <Is> it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do I get them reduced if I buy in bulk? <laughs> so how many did you buy, what was it? I don't know, probably about hundred. Right, okay. And is she allowed to use those with anyone? <laughs> <laughs> Did you wrap them? Could she yeah, just go yeah, out and have yeah, a wild yeah. Well, you don't need to wrap them, they're already wrapped, aren't they? Oh. And then what did she say so when she opened them? No, just... wait, wait, I'll, 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 God, what did she <laughs> say? Right, play a record and we'll come back to this. Put <laughs> 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 your words to my father, that's genius. <laughs> Made famous, of course, by Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. That's all along the watchtower as originally done by Mr. Bob Dylan. On XFM 104.9. So, Carl, just just take us through the moment where you gave this gift. Firstly, so you, so you, 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 you went into Boots, right? You thought, all right, 100 condoms. Brilliant. Mm. Okay. Did you wrap it up? I don't know if it was 100. Probably 80. Right, okay. Yeah. Right. You don't so, want to go uh, mad, do you? <laughs> <laughs> wrap them up. I'm just, I, you know, I'm just resting easy knowing that he's not trying to breed. <laughs> <laughs> Right? <laughs> no. Yeah. So, uh, I got her them. I got her, uh, Grease on DVD, cause okay. she's always watching that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, so just think of uh, when her mum said, what did Carl get you? Some condoms and grease. <laughs> I was just so glad he said on DVD. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And, um, she was surprised anyway, right, because- Yeah, I when, bet she was. No, when, when she got- <laughs> she, she was, she was thinking like jewellery. No. <laughs> that, right. that, that showed her. <laughs> <laughs> that surprised you, wasn't it? <laughs> Alright? <laughs> oh, so hang on, wait a minute. You thought it was a holiday, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, look at your face. You don't know me at all. <laughs> Um, so hang on, so did you give these on Christmas Day? Right, what <laughs> happened is, she got in from work that Saturday, <coughs> right, 
And I said, look under the tree. Knackered, oh, right. at least it's Christmas. <laughs> yeah. At least I'm going to get a little bit. Uh, yeah, I, said, I said, look, you got some stuff under the tree. Right. <laughs> So, uh, she, did you surprise, give her a sugar right? lamp? Right, she was really chuffed with that. <laughs> but she said, she was a bit, a bit puzzled because I didn't know we had any wrapping paper, right, so I ended up using wallpaper. <laughs> you didn't take it off the wall, though. You had no, some... no, it was some left over, right? So she said, why have you used wallpaper? I said, well, I didn't have any paper and you were getting in in a bit and I wanted you to have a surprise. <laughs> so, she said, can I have a feel of them? <laughs> I said, <"Yeah."> the presents. <laughs> she thought, right, I've got the right thing. Yeah. Right. And, uh, then Christmas Day. Um, I said, no, don't get carried away, it's nothing really good, you know, we said we weren't gonna buy each other much. Uh, so there you go, open them. Yeah, go on. And, uh, Can I just ask, had you received your present from her yet? Yeah. So what had you received? Um, what did he have? Had some shoes. Nice. Right. Um, getaway game for PlayStation. Nice. Just I'm just tightening up just the value of, the value of those. Yeah. On, yeah. And oh. just also think about how much fun mm. and pleasure you get from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, yeah, yeah. of course, condoms, I can see the, <laughs> well, you see the appeal. Well, okay, um, yeah, so yeah. I think but I can... also add to that bit 150 quid for a meal. <laughs> if you're gonna start Minus. totting up, 150 quid for a meal, <laughs> I bought some shoes 72 quid. <laughs> Yeah, that was after the event, then. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, so you received these, dare I say it, thoughtful and nice gifts. You handed over the box of uh, condoms. They were wrapped up. She well, unwrapped them. Uh, yeah. Go on, take us through it. Walk well, us through it. Well, it's not. It's not something you play with on Christmas morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh. But, right. But uh, when she opened them, what did she say? What did she say? Well, I wrapped them twice. As well, so she thought it was something really good. Extra like, protection, Ooh. right? And, uh, so she thought it was something really good. And then, and so then, the disappointment would be double. <laughs> yeah, go on, yeah. And then she just opened it and went, "Oh yeah, so what's on the telly?" And that, was that. ungrateful. That was that. What an ungrateful woman that is. Well, fancy she got not, stuff. Fancy not wanting. I told her a, a I told box her, of economy condoms from Boots. I said to her about the thing about you know it's all about the surprise and that, isn't it? Yeah, you explained um, that to her. Yeah. What after she'd unwrapped it? Yeah. Thoughtful. And she was, she was all right about it. Yeah. She understood. Rick, you know I suggested to him that he buy his girlfriend a gift. I'm worried I've done more damage to the relationship <laughs> by suggesting that than if he had just forgotten. Next time you've got to go shopping for yourself, Steve. I think I might do. You've better to go shopping for yourself. It's, it? I'm glad it's all over though. It's, it's mental. Yeah. I, it annoys me. The whole thing <laughs> annoys me. And she knows that as well. Yeah. <laughs> she should know. What, is she, is she still insists on having Christmas once a year? Well. Well. I'm, I'm, I'm you know. No, but, uh, well, anyway, what did you get? I can't think what you, what you bring to the relationship, <laughs> Carl. I don't know what it is she's getting from you in this relationship. Uh, it's like uh, she's doing all the know. work. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> 80 times. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, God, Carl. I love oh. it. You're brilliant. I know what she's getting. He's the, he's the, he's the, uh, what though? He's not thoughtful. No, he, no, but he's, he's thoughtful. He's the best he can do with the brain he's got. Do you know what I mean? Right. He's doing his best. Mm. He's mm. absolutely doing his best. There's no. <laughs> he's working at the limits of his power. Do you know what I mean? Though he's done as well as he can with what he was given. Sure. Yeah, right I mean, and that's that's admirable. Yeah. Uh, it's like I think he's done better than you'd, you'd expect. I bet his teachers didn't even think he'd get this far. Do you know what I mean? What? Find a girl. No. Well, yeah, a job, a girl. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Clothe himself. He's, do <laughs> he's done really well. What do you think, Carl? You think you've done well? I, th I think I've done all right compared to some of my mates. What are they doing now? Probably not that much. Mm. Do you know mm. what I mean? The, the Mrs. Matthews said I wouldn't be an eye flyer. I think I'm doing all right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I have a holiday every year. <laughs> uh, got somewhere to live and that. Yeah. yeah. Got a new flat, haven't you? Yeah. So. So where are they then? The condoms? Are they? Did she show them to her family and friends? No. Take no, them into no. work. Look what Carl got. I'm surprised got she told Ricky. Actually, I was a bit disappointed in that. Yeah. Because I didn't go shouting. <laughs> well, away she was so I excited, got. Carl. Clearly, <laughs> she was just yeah. so pleased and proud. Yeah. <laughs> All right, play records. We come back to it. No, that's it now. A new day, another morning after. Leaning back on my chair in a greasy. <laughs> no. Oh, no, that's it. That's Streets, it. don't mug yourself. XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, a regular Santa Claus. <laughs> I'll, leave it now, I'll leave it. Oh dear. So, Rockbusters. Rockbusters, uh, first one of the year. Um, Do you want to explain it? In case yeah, we've got some new listeners. Some new listeners. Like might it. have. Might have. Like you never it. know. Like Chance to win some stuff. Um, I'll give you like a cryptic clue, and some initials. And it sort of makes up a band, so an easy one that we did 
at the start was uh, an exploding pet AK atomic kitten. Yeah. Right, that's how it works. So there's three of them. Um, it's email only. You email in ricky.gervais at xfn.co.uk and uh, you win all that stuff Steve was talking about. Right, first one. Uh, £42 for a torch. <laughs> Forty-two pound for a torch. That's a bit pricey. Uh, that's D. Right? That's D. Yeah. So just, just give us a, give write us that again. down. So forty-two pound for a torch. That, that's a bit pricey, isn't it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A little bit of enhancement. <laughs> yeah. Digging up his growth. Oh, okay, go on. That's, that's D. D. Uh, the second one. Um, he'll fit some chocolate to your feet. Say that again. He'll fit some chocolate to your feet. Is that he will fit some chocolate to your feet? He'll. Yeah. 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 He'll fit some chocolate to your feet. And the initial there is A. That's A. Yeah. And uh, the third and final one. Uh, do you think your kid will get that strawberry for me? <laughs> do you right. think? Say it again. Do you think? Uh, do you think your kid will get that strawberry for me? That's <laughs> WP. Right now, I'd better warn people. Um, you really got to get into the mindset of Carl here. These are not real cryptic clues. These are not cryptic clues that you do in the Guardian or the, the Times crossword. Um, there's usually something wrong with them. Uh, it is usually, um, uh, what's the word? Um, completely change the word in order to make it fit. Yes. Often. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just be careful. Don't be surprised. Exactly. Okay. Um, do you want to give us them again very quickly? All right. Uh, first one, 42 quid for a torch. That's, that's a bit pricey, isn't it? All right, that's <laughs> D. Uh, second one, it'll fit some chocolate to your feet. Can't think of any. I can't a. think. That's A. a. And, uh, do you think, uh, do you think your kid will get that strawberry for me? W.P. Right, so, uh, Ricky Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Some great yeah. prizes to be won. Yeah. <sighs> Richard Ashcroft, Science of Silence. Steve, if there was a record of the week, that would be a record of the week. You're a big fan, I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Let's make it record of the week. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's record of the week. Richard Ashcroft. Excellent. Science of silence. Brilliant. No one gives us anything anyway. Are these pluggers, they come in, we get things like homemade bands that they've pressed it in their garage. Yeah. You can hear their mum in the background going, what are you doing? <laughs> exactly. Mum! <laughs> recording this for XFM! <laughs> yeah. 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Carl, what have you got for us? I was us? just thinking, the irony is, we're the only people on this station, I think, who play their own records, aren't we? Yeah, I know. There's loads of people who do. Rubbish. John Kennedy plays what he wants. Yeah, he's on in the Yeah, but he's, like, yeah, he's on three o'clock in the morning, no one's up. Zoe, on drive, she plays some yeah. stuff. Yeah. What do you mean, what does she play? Yeah. Fat Boy Slim, probably. Play? Here's another remix. You know. I won't say who it's by. Christian <laughs> plays some of his own. Does he? Yeah, so... Yeah, they're probably novelty songs, aren't they, by you? Right, <laughs> listen, right, um, yeah, New Year and all that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> He's great, isn't he? Rock really? Busters, Rock Busters is on the way, we're getting some good stuff coming in. I have so. to say, I'm, I'm amazed. Every answer I've had so far has been correct. I listen to the clues, I've got no idea. And I know you, Carl, I spend time with you. Have I know you seen how you the work. XFM listeners? <laughs> well, of course they're the same as Carl. Sure. Of course they've got the same mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Right. Uh, so what did you do for New Year, incidentally? Well, I met, I cocked it up a bit. Right. You're joking. <laughs> on, You're joking. Go. You're joking, mate. Go on. I went and, uh, booked a <laughs> you table. You got the wrong day. No, right? <laughs> Bo booked a table at a restaurant that was shut. <laughs> right? What? I booked a, a table at a restaurant, and the one that I called, it wasn't the one. The call had been diverted. So <laughs> Suzanne said, call them up and see what they're serving, right? Because I forgot to do that when I booked the table, right? <laughs> That's so, great, anyway. So got, because the thing is, right, it's a restaurant in Covent Garden, but they've got one in Victoria. But when they answered and they said, no, 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 Victoria, I thought that was the person who was answering the phone. Do you know how some people say the name? Right. Right? So then when I called them up and said, what you are you thought, You thought he sounded a bit funny. Right? So, uh... I'm confused, Carl, but probably not more. Well, no, it was no a more than you would have been okay, on the Okay, it was a day. branch of a, um... All right, all right, he doesn't right, want to give the restaurant away. So he phoned it up, there's one in Covent Garden, they answered the so phone. So it's not, the restaurant's not called No, 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 No. No, No, they, they, are, they, they said, No, 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 Victoria. Why can't it, we do the restaurant? I don't know why. <laughs> it's scared? not libelous. Are we scared that, like, are you scared people are gonna sort of see you in there, because it's your regular haunt? No, it's just that, you know, you got to pay for stuff, haven't you? Right. I mean, it's... Okay, anyway, so you've I got- I mentioned it before New Year, but it's not- So did you go all the now, way to it? the restaurant to find out that it was closed? No, no, no. What happened is I called- Was that the name of the restaurant again? 
<laughs> right. The restaurant's <laughs> called Christopher's. They've got one in Covent Garden, they've got one in Victoria. He right. phoned up, he went to book, it's a lovely restaurant, I've been there often, I recommend it to him. He phones up, says, can I have a table for a new, uh, new, he said, no problem, sir. Right? And then, uh, so then I said, oh, you better call up to see if they'd, to see if they've got any haddock on the, <laughs> uh, menu. And he went, hello, and they went, hello, uh, Christopher's. Victoria went, Victoria? They went, yeah, he went, oh, no. That's it, innit? So then, I just said, no, forget it. I'm not going all the way over there. Right. So I cancelled it, right? So, <coughs> then I called up Suzanne and said, look, I've made an error. Uh, the yes. place we were going to is shut. Was she so surprised again, or? So we're not going, <laughs> so she said, oh, try some other places, and I did. They were all booked up, yeah. right? I was fed up anyway. I ate New Year. It's always like this, isn't it? So, <laughs> so uh, I said, look. You know the common factor in all these <laughs> stories? You <laughs> hate Christmas, you hate Christmas, it's you, you hate New Year. It is you. Right? Yeah. So, I said, I'll sort something out. Yeah. So I went to Tesco. Leave it with me. Went to Tesco's, boots were Tesco. shut. <laughs> got, a, got a lovely plate of condoms. Did you just stay in and play with the, her birthday? <laughs> <laughs> Blowing them up. Yeah. Just just I've, done, look, look, I've done some balloons. <laughs> well, it, it was. I think we did stay in. And I watched uh, that thing that, you know, 100 Greatest Moments, which was annoying me. Did you see, um, there was a nudist on it. You know how I feel about them. Mm, yeah. Right? Um, did you man, see him? Man with two knobs. There was a man with two knobs on it. And uh, a nudist who uh, just like wanders about the house. But it said, it said, uh, and when he visits people, uh, they, I was thinking, who, who lets him visit? I go, exactly, yeah. The, yeah but, but he must go there with trousers on and go, hello, love to see you. Can I just pop all these off? <laughs> well, not really, no. And I'll tell you what, what annoyed me the most, he had a white sofa. Uh, if you were a nudist, you'd get, you'd get a darker one. <laughs> right? So anyway, right, so we ended up watching that. That annoyed me. <laughs> and then, um, I was tired by about 11 and I said, oh, let's go to bed. And she said, you can't. And that annoys me, the fact that because it's New Year, you've got to stay up. And it's like, well, why? Can't we just, you should bring it forward. So in case you want <laughs> to- To quarter to ten. Quarter to ten. <laughs> well, you say, yeah, well, you stay up and it's like my eyes were dead heavy and I was like, oh, I want to go to sleep. So just stay up and then it's midnight and you go up in New Year, then you go to bed. Yeah. Well, not everyone, Carl. Yeah, Some people have a little party. Right. Um, so... So it's over with anyway. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, so are you 86 years old? <laughs> <laughs> 86, <laughs> Do you ever enjoy... Can't, you never seem to have any fun, Carl. This is what disappoints This is what worries me. I feel like you're gonna die You're here, young, to, you're, you know? you're here, Carl. With us two. We've got three, as I was just saying to Steve, three of the greatest comedy minds ever in one room, and Steve pointed out, since the goodies. True. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean this should you... be party central. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, right, so this is when I spent time thinking of new ideas. Right. So that's when I came up with, uh, what did I come up with? Rituals. Yeah. Ah, uh, this is about, uh, it's good to have a flathead in India. I know, just yeah. worse past Just worse yeah. It's good to have a flathead in India. Is that it? Um, well what they do is they put wood round your head and sort of clamp it and the flatter head you've got apparently the more attractive in some part of India, can't remember. So that's like a, that's a ritual. So I don't know where to start with this. No. Well leave it, leave it. Um, we've, we've, we'll be doing that, well we've done it. That's, that's So that was the first week. one, was it? That's yeah. not for this week! <laughs> right? We've uh, also ah. got, um, we've also got Do, do We Need Em, which yeah. we carried on from last year, okay, which is finding out, them. you know, what animals we need in the world, which ones we can get rid of. I'm talking to experts and that, finding yeah. that out. We're doing Rockbusters, that's underway, we're getting emails in. And, uh, what do you think of that then? What do you think of that then, of course? We've, we've I love this, that he treats this show like it's a checklist for what he's got to pack for holiday. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, you just go, sun cream, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's I all know. like, it's done. Look, look <laughs> at his face. No, but I try and come up with stuff that people will remember and go, that's interesting. I'll tell my mates that in the pub. Another one I'm, I'm thinking of doing, do you know the film Around the World in 80 Days? Ooh. Around the World in 80 Gervais. And like. what I do, I give you like little, uh, things like little bits of information about countries, so that if you go, you'd go like, oh, I don't, don't want to go there. This is a terrible thing to say, and I apologise. I, I, I can't think of the PC word for it, but I think Carl is slightly retarded. Yes, I was just going to think. I was just thinking the same. Yeah, yeah. Is there something we can do about that? Is there... Just play a record. Just keep the. Could talk... we get ourselves registered as a charity? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Bally drawn boy, born again. On XFM, 104.9. I'm just sorry, I was just looking to see if that's a new single. It looks like it probably yeah, is, yeah, if that's of interest to you. It's a new one. Yeah. yeah. So, well, first of our, um, regular features with Carl, we've got 
Rockbusters, that's rolling. Mm -hmm. There's uh, people coming in. They're, they're getting them right. I don't. I don't understand well, myself. Well, as ever, Rick, you'll be, uh, you'll be amazed and confounded. So I don't know the answer and I haven't looked at the answers. I, I just like that moment. It's like when you go down Christmas and you're excited about a present and it's like some condoms. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. well, I love that, that. <laughs> yeah, that moment. Yeah. Um, I, right. just, I don't know how he's gonna top that next year. I don't know how he's gonna top that. All I can think of is yeah. some corn plasters. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, it's alright, love. The batteries are included. Got you a pumice stone. <laughs> right, now, do we need them? Do we need them? It's something we've started a few weeks ago. Uh, we're always talking about animals and insects and that. And um, it's like, you know, if you took an animal out of the world, would, would we have problems? Right? <laughs> would it That's, make any uh, difference? Yeah, would it make any difference? We That's did jellyfish we, last time, didn't we? Yeah. We the, sorted that out. The woman said we've got to keep them. We do um, need them because turtles eat them. Yeah. Um, so I've moved on. Octopus. Do we need the octopus? Yeah. Let's find out. <laughs> Working through um, a load of animals, right? That uh, and finding out whether we need them or not, right? Right. Because like jellyfish, to me, I'm a bit puzzled by them. I don't really know why we need jellyfish. And I spoke to some experts. Turtles expert. eat them. What? Turtles eat them. Yeah, I know, but do we need turtles? Do you know what I mean? It, it goes on and on, doesn't we it? We need humans. Well, you know, I mean, that, I might get to that bit, but yeah. I need to sort out the animals first. I've got right. a lot on. So the thing is, I've, I've left the jellyfish. We know we need them. Right. right. So, octopus. Yeah. Right, I know they're pretty brainy. Incredibly brainy. Um, a story that I heard, I don't know if it's true, but uh, there was some science lab somewhere, right? Yeah. Where they had some octopus in it and they had some crabs. Yeah. And at night, the octopus was like getting a bit bored on its own in the dark and that, and they, they sort of come alive in the dark, don't they? Yeah. They like the dark. Yeah. And the octopus had, like, had its eye on the crabs. And at night, when it's dark, it was getting out of its little cage, crawling along the floor, getting in the crab's cage, getting them out and eating them. I don't doubt it. We put jam jars with the lids on, with crabs in, and they'll open the jam jar and... You're joking? Yeah. Even I sometimes struggle with them. <laughs> yeah, we don't do it... R well, well, you don't do it really, really tight, but... Oh, right, so they're not that clever, then? Well, they would, if they were strong enough, they'd open it, but they're just not that strong. Oh, that's mad. Right, I also know that, uh, if they get hungry, they, they eat their own legs. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, they're deaf. Well, I don't know. I'm, yeah. I don't really know. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, they don't live very long. Um, uh, they can squash themselves into small jugs. Oh, yeah, they can go in a demijohn through the narrow neck and that. Why, why do they need to do that? Because they're the sort of crevices and holes that they're hunting for crabs and things through. So, would they be better if they were smaller? Do you know what I mean? Well, I don't know. I really don't know. It's... Yeah. But octopus, then, if if Noah said to you, you know, we're, we're, we're having a clear out. Yeah. We've got too many animals to look after and that in the sea, taking up too much room. Right. Do we need them? I think there's other l less useful things in the sea than octopus. Limpets, they could go. Limpets? Yeah, they just sit on a rock and do nothing for 50 years. But they're not getting in the way, then. How big are they? Oh, not very big. Yeah, you see, I, I might come round to them, but I, I, I never think, oh, you know, I'm sick of seeing these limpets. Whereas octopus, you know, crawling about, opening jam jars and that. You'd never see them, though. They're pretty, really rare. Well... If we get two or three caught a year, it's a, you know, it's quite amazing. Do we need them? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well, we'll just have to keep them, then. <laughs> I love that, that Carl can confuse a scientist. Yeah. Yeah, because all systems of logic break down. I know, I, even learned. the scientist was going, well, oh, get rid of limpets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That now, is who brilliant. was that guy? Uh, I think his name was Chris. And where was he from? In a place called Megavissi, where I went one year. Megavissi. And is he, uh, yeah, he's a scientist, is he? Uh, I think he's got a fish shop or something like that. He's got a fish shop? No, he doesn't. Well, like an aquarium type place. Oh, right. 
So. A fish shop. <laughs> it would fish and chip shop. It would have been asked him that he, uh, uh, a, a yeah. winkle store. <laughs> He's got a winkle store at Paul Arbor. Yeah, that's an expert. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But, what, uh, what have you learned from that then? Well, the, uh, we don't know whether they're deaf or not, because the scientist, the bloke in the chip right, shop couldn't are. confirm it. <laughs> um, they eat their own legs. Yeah, Look at that's that. That's a bit weird. Yeah. Isn't it? They that's eat weird. their own legs? They eat their own legs if they get hungry. Right. Um, and they grow back, don't they? Yeah, I think so, yeah. If, if you, if you eat one, they'll grow back. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you can put them in, in little jars and that. Uh, if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just a bit weird, isn't it? It's like, um, <laughs> no, but do you know, like, you know, people have a go about being cruel to animals and that, but what he was saying there is, right, what they've watched an octopus do, they've, they've got hold of a crab, right, so that'll be being stressed out because it's out of the water. <laughs> yep. They've then stressed it out even more by putting it in a jar. <laughs> right. Which he didn't like. Uh -huh. <laughs> And then an octopus is crawling about on the jar, yeah. and the crab knows that the octopus wants to eat it, right? Yeah. So then it's having more frets, yeah, because of that, and then they let the octopus eat it. Yeah. I think that's that's pretty. Do we need crabs? Uh, See them next week, yeah. Well, I want to sort out snails first. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> What's your pitch with snails? What do you know about snails? Um, I know that um, bats eat them. Um. They can sleep for 13 years. Right. <laughs> oh, you do it. Can you believe that? Okay. <laughs> he said to me, he said to me, snails can sleep for 13 years. And I went, right. He went, oh, thing is though, if it was a scientist and he was, you know, he was, he was looking at it and he put it in a quiet place, it might well doze off. <laughs> he said, it wouldn't be the same if it lived on the streets. <laughs> And then we went on to a whole thing about homeless. He wants to do a game show with celebrities being homeless for a week. What do you think? Actually, I've got to say, that's not bad at it's all. It's not bad, is it? No. Do you, do you know how, like, Lenny Henry went to the jungle? Yeah. Right? And you've got, uh, you've got, what, what, who else did it? Um, John, uh, John, John Lundley made slippers out of a bra. <laughs> right? So I'm thinking, like, get a celebrity and say to him, <laughs> no, just because, I'll tell you why, right? I'll tell yeah. you why all this came about. When I was walking back from that Christmas meal that I bought my girlfriend for 150 quid. Right. <laughs> Lest we forget. Right. Um, I was walking down Mortimer Street and there was an homeless fella there and it was like, oh, you know, it's really, really bad. But the weird thing is, it was, it was about, I don't know, probably about eight, eight o'clock. Yeah. No, about, about nine. Right. right. And he was asleep. And I just thought, do homeless people ever think, do you know, I think I'll... I'll have an early one tonight. <laughs> right, that's that's what got me thinking. It's a bit weird the whole lifestyle of it. The yes. fact that he had an early one. So, uh, the fact, what, what, if it's a bit weird that he's sleeping not in a home, but on the street. No, it's just that if it's I interesting. if I was interesting. homeless, I'd probably stay up quite late because it's not nice. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? What are you talking about? Just being homeless isn't a good thing, is it? No. People forget how bad it is. Yeah. Right? But surely sleeping gets you out of reality. They sleep because they're tired, they can't sleep very well, so they need all the sleep they can get. Yeah, but sleeping's nice if you've got a nice big bed. What, you think that they can go, I'll oh, stay up, I'll go to bed at two, I'll go straight to sleep and I'll pop up at eight <laughs> when the alarm <laughs> clock goes off? Well, it's just what I was thinking, right? <laughs> so I was thinking how bad it is and it's, you know, especially this time of the year, you know. Yeah, uh, it's terrible. It's the, uh, it's it's the really worst nice. thing. And to sort of give it some publicity and get a bit of help behind it, get celebrities, yeah. someone like I've Phil Mitchell, <laughs> maybe, yeah. off, off EastEnders, yeah. who's a big fella, he can look after himself, put him in a shop doorway, right. have some cameras set far away in a building or something, yeah. they can film him, right. and it's up to him how he raises money for food to eat. He could sign autographs. <laughs> Well, they wouldn't know him though, would they? Because the, you, you never look Who at a homeless get? person. You get, uh, what's her name? Gail you Porter. Know, Yep. Gabby Roslin. Right, yeah. Narinda from Big Brother. Yeah. Uh, who else would do it? Um. I got a game show idea. Les Dennis, called, I reckon. I do got it. a game show idea called On the Game. <laughs> and, uh, what happens is you get Narinda from Big Brother. <laughs> Sugar Cane. By Sonic Youth on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Go on, Carl, what, what's, what's next? Are you gonna do your, um, war feature? War, what is it called? War, do you think of that then? You do that now? I just, 
it annoys me a bit, right, because we said before Christmas that we'd come back with new stuff. Yeah. Um, gave you a title to work on, that Rickidiculous. Right. You came in today, I said, have you sorted it out? You say no. Steve, you're having a go at me for getting, wanting to get music out of the library for you. Yeah. You haven't got any new ideas. Sure. But you're dissing mine. I'm not dissing yours. Well, I'm, I, getting, I, I'm, I'm a massive a fan of them. Good vibe off you. <laughs> oh, I think that's very harsh. I, I just asked you when were we going to have war? Do you think of that? I'm a big well, fan. I'm excited. Well, it's not that good to be honest with you. <laughs> well, I disagree. It sounds brilliant. Right. Well, it's it's a bit of a tweak of educating Ricky. Uh, right. Just some information on on wars. Yeah. Um, okay. World War Two. World War Two. All right. Um, the world champion chess player. Um, he helped uh, someone out, um, in the war. <laughs> it's the detail I like. <laughs> no, he You know, he it's, ne it's nearly a history programme, isn't it? <laughs> he I was watching those repeats of the world at war. Yeah. That were on in the mornings, you know, incredibly Did detailed, you like- they got nothing on cards. Did you write a lot of that David Sharma series? <laughs> he, he was able to use his skills that he has to play chess, because apparently chess is all about probabilities of, like, where, you know, where a piece will be put. Right. And, uh, they got him in, and they said, can you help us out? He said, yeah. And, uh, he said, right, where, sh where should we, like, fight? Hitler has just moved his queen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, that's yeah. A, that's a fact. He sent in a bishop that ran diagonally <laughs> yeah, exactly. through the troops, <laughs> knocking him over. Sorry, wait a minute, Carl. So they got a chest Sorry, that's, that's it! Well, yeah. It's just like, oh, what do you think of that? Again, that's not a story! But it angers me that he says that I'm down on the ideas when that, I mean, that's beginning to shape up. It was quite interesting. I thought you were going to tell me which battle or which event was II. you- World War II. There's not a battle. But which bit of World War Two? Like, the, the middle bit. <laughs> a six years worth. Yeah, well, probably about a bit in- Guessing. Thought, let's... Guessing. Well, all right, yeah, there is a bit of guesswork, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> But that could have been an interesting thing if you told me it had an impact well, on the normal landings. Well, when you look at these things, do you go, uh, bloke wants help chess, oh, I'll use that, and run away from the computer? No, Or I run out it. of the bookshop? I read the first line where I get enough information, I just think- What do you mean you read the first line where you get enough information? Imagine if you were someone's defence lawyer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he was like, he's on death row, <laughs> yeah. and went, oh, I don't think he did it. <laughs> yeah. I read the first line, I didn't read the file it's completely. He was in a hotel in Texas, right? Go on. It's enough. Oh, some other it's stuff. Enough. It's enough, it's enough. It's enough, it's, it's enough. enough. Yeah, I, I, no, I just thought they always took ages on deciding where to go. It's just like, you know, bet there's a better I way. don't know what you're saying now, I don't know what- I don't know what you're talking about. Well, Actually, take, well, don't know what you're talking about. When people play chess, they take ages to make the move. <laughs> so I'm just thinking, there's probably a quicker way. <laughs> of what? Than finding where a boat is, than getting a chess player in. I don't know- I don't know what you mean now. Right, Are you talking right, about I'll battleships now? They should've got an expert battleships player in. Right. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! What- but I can't- right, what, forget that one or someone No, really no, good. no, no, I'm not being funny, but what is that? What are you telling me there? Someone who's really good at risk. <laughs> yeah. I should've brought them in. <laughs> yeah! Cluedo! Right, yeah. another fact on I thought that's enough then, is it? Well, they use expert Cluedo players, um, but the police use oh, expert they, Cluedo they do use- yeah, 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 yeah. If ever there's a murder in a country house- Do you think they use that old Chinese fella? Um, on the front of, um, uh, Mastermind. The mastermind, yeah. 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 Yeah, for logic problems. Mm. The, the Enigma code was broken by top Mastermind <laughs> players. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Right, second fact. And a guy who had a couple of rounds of Yahtzee and done very well. <laughs> yeah. Second fact about the war. They, um, for engineering, they use a lot of Jenga. Players. Absolutely. Yeah, whenever they want will the building collapse? Oh. I don't know. Let's pull this. Let's see. If yes, it will. If they wanted to identify, uh, <laughs> what, what are you doing? If they wanted to identify spies, yeah. bring me the champion of guess who. <laughs> <laughs> Was it one with glasses? No, it might sit <laughs> down. Has got a beard? Is it Bernard? <laughs> <laughs> right, Carl. Sorry. Right. Go on. An another war fact. So go on. You're saying it's rubbish, but look, you will, you love that. Yeah. Right. yeah. Second you're one. Absolutely right. Um, yeah. the first bomb that was dropped on Berlin. Yeah. It didn't kill a person, but it killed an elephant. <laughs> I think that's true. That is true. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the last one. Is that all you know about that? See, that's interesting, isn't it? But what that's was enough. The, but, but no, it's not, it's though. Not cause I, no, because, I mean, listen, most people want to go, oh, what was the elephant doing there? Did oh, it land on a zoo? Was it a pet? Oh. Was it a lost elephant? Did they aim at the elephant? How did it kill it? Did was it, it, it hit on his favourite elephant? <laughs> yeah, yeah, was it hit his favourite elephant? Did it then have one ball? Yeah. I mean, these are the things, you know, why didn't he catch it with his mm. trunk? Did it have an effect on yeah. German morale? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that yes. elephant is kaput! <laughs> uh, oh, Jumbo! 
<laughs> I don't want to fight anymore. <laughs> Cheering breaks, painkiller, on XFM. Carl's getting a little bit stressed, aren't you? No, I, I just, I just, you know, got to keep focused, got to keep the show good and that. Yeah. You know, and in the yeah. new year, the idea was come up with some good snappy stuff. Yeah. And today, I just think it's it's been a mess with you, to be honest. I mean, this is the sort of thing I'd prefer to do after the show as as the producer. Yeah. But. You know, I, do you know what, I think it's a discipline problem. <laughs> Is I'm it because sure it, it, it I just put sellotape on your head? Well, that that's a bit to do with it. But just you know, let's let's just focus. But on I didn't put it when there was any hair on your eyebrows. I put it across your forehead. Right. What do you think of that then? Yeah. We've got one more bit left. Brilliant. One more fact. Um, the French, right, when they were at war. Um, <laughs> David Sharma, I just imagine him just introducing the amazing. Which which war was this? It was still the World War. Uh, One World or War, two. World you, War go two. on. It's fifty fifty. Go on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> right. right. World War Two. Uh, what the French did. Uh, did everyone needs a code. Right. <laughs> everyone needs a code. <laughs> yep. A code when you when you're in the army. This is a Disney song. Right. <laughs> um, and you know to sort of give the go ahead if you want to go into battle and stuff. Okay. Right. So, uh, <laughs> but the weird Game thing is, show. right? The weird thing Everyone. is, do you know what? Do you know what theirs was? Go on. Do you? Yeah, yeah. I've, I know what it is. It's so, what was the, the French code for? What to sort of say? Right? Yeah. Go on. But they had more than one <laughs> on on this day. But I don't know what day it is. <laughs> on All this right. day. And um, what? It's just like I said, what am I thinking of? <laughs> what was the battle? What was the Okay, right. so all right. What look, look at him. Look at him. Look, he's genuinely confused that I've asked this question. Right. It was no, it was... no, no. If you ask me a question, ask me the question quickly. Um, what was the what was the code for battle during what battle? World War Two. No, that's not a battle. That's a war. Yeah, it was in a war. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, I don't know what to do. He right. confuses people. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right. Okay. What was it, Carl? What was the yeah? Code? What, what, what the are you French thinking code? of? Right. John's got a moustache. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what are ah, you talking my about? Lungs are that, burst. that was was a code that the French used. You know, like I mean, I, I just think it's a bit daft, right? Uh, because you could come up with that by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Two French folks talking in the trenches, and they see they see a major walk past, and they go, oh, "Look, John's got a moustache," and they all go and go, "No, I was just talking." <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, the way. I, I don't think that's a good code. I'm, I'm not. I don't know. believe it is the code. No, it is seriously. And what? Uh, and it's would just it, would it have been, would it have been it. said in French? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Guess him. Guess him. Yeah. 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 No, but what? You say I can't even be, be bothered. <laughs> what? What are you saying, Carl? Because it's not a very good code. Do you know, like we've talked in the past about you know things you don't <laughs> see, and I said an old man eating a Twix. <laughs> yeah. If they use that, that wouldn't. That's safe. Because no one is ever going to see a man having an old, you know, an old man having a Twix. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, use that as a code. Don't use a saying, <laughs> John's got a moustache, that could crop up. <laughs> it's like the war's kicked off. Why did, how, why did how'd that happen? Well, I said John had a moustache. Oh. <laughs> two French folks would never be saying, John's got a moustache. <laughs> why would they? they? Because well, back then they were fashionable. <laughs> <laughs> he nearly makes sense, doesn't he? I assume it would have been Jean. Yeah. No, probably John. And I, I, how would this how would this code have been? I mean, who would have I announced don't know. this? I just to read it. I read it like that, Steve. That's what was on the internet. This is a code that was used. John's got. But don't a be angry with me. I know, but you're always asking questions. That's <laughs> because I'm interested in history. <laughs> yeah. No, it's genu you genuinely interesting bloke, Carl. We'd like to know. I'd like to film you secretly. You know, like they do, like Nature Watch, when they put it in a uh, like a, you know, <laughs> I mean, the badges sort of thing, right? Like, yeah. And they just they just watch it. I'd like to see what you do, pop around them. <laughs> I wish I could download the music in your head, because it'd be <laughs> and you see something weird, you go <laughs> and then you read that and you go <laughs> and you write it down, and that's what comes out. John's got a moustache. They I'd like to see next Christmas. Imagine the French, right, for their battle cry, for their battle code. 
you know, it's going ahead, they're going over the top, is you never see an old bloke eating a Twix. <laughs> Imagine that! Yeah, but the, all these things are things that I think in my head. Right? <laughs> Keep them in there! <laughs> Do you know what like before, before when I was talking about going out on, you know, Christmas Day, yeah. having a meal on the way back, seeing a homeless person? Yeah. And then I think, God, that wouldn't be good. I don't know, TV show, right? <laughs> you can think of things like that. When I saw the homeless fella, then I got talking to Suzanne about when I had to sleep in my car. What do you mean? Go on. Let's play a record and come oh, back to any sleeping in the car. God, I can't wait. Play a song for the I was watching last night, Carl, <sighs> on cable TV, 1987's Amazing. Sign of the Times Prince in Concert film. It was dynamite. I thought to myself, how brilliant he is. It reminded me of the gig I went to see last year. He played this tune. It's from the album Parade. Okay, I don't want to discuss whether or not Prince is acceptable on XFM or whether he's a genius. He is a genius. That's the end. That's the end of the discussion. Oh, Play the tune. He's dynamite. It's a song for the ladies. I, was, I remember, um, I was gonna tell you, um, I was on the way here. You know, um, do you remember John? He's got a moustache now. I can't believe it. It's news in April from the lovely Prince. Brilliant. Uh, from the album Parade. Uh, he doesn't always have to get up and have a rock about. He can just sit there at the piano. You can't argue with that. Pass After out, the you? break, Steve, a brand new feature I've just done, <laughs> that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. You see, you say Ricky Gervais doesn't put any work into the show. He's just done that. I'm gonna that tell song. Carl some amazing facts from the world of science, nature, politics. Four are real. One is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Cat Stevens, from the Catch Bullet 4 album, Sitting. Little interesting fact for the nerds. We got it down to two songs to, uh, do this intro music to The Office. It was that one, and Handbags and Cloud Rags. We went for Handbags and Cloud Interesting, isn't it? It is a fascinating fact, except yeah. of course we want- I still feel we should use that one, except we couldn't, cos, uh, Cat Stevens' people wouldn't let us. Or it was too expensive or something. I don't know, we recorded the Rod Stewart one, that I, I, too expensive. I still- I still prefer that one, I think. Yeah. Difficult. <laughs> Difficult. Decision. Anyway, decisions. that's ridiculous. Right. Five facts. Right. One is totally made up. All right. Just do three. Three. And oh well, one. there's okay. Right. Um. Um. Oh, let's see. What should I do then? Uh, there this are more was moves. Carefully planned. There are more moves possible in a game of chess than there are particles in the universe. Um. You can't get any colder than liquid nitrogen. I think it's minus. Two seven three. You, can, you can't. It's impossible to get colder than that. Um, the honey badger has got skin so loose that if you grabbed it by the neck, it could uh, come away from its skin, turn round, and bite you out of its anus. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Right, Rockbusters then, uh, wrapping it up, um, It needs some work, that game, but I see it's got a lot of mileage. Um, <laughs> right, here uh, we go then, the first one, uh, £42 for a torch, that's a bit pricey. Go on. That was D, yeah. that was Daylight. Wait, I thought Delight, and I thought um, it doesn't work. One. It doesn't work. Second I actually thought Delight doesn't work. Second one. There's no, um, no, wait, 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 Daylight, it doesn't work, it's Delight. Second one was- No, no, Carl, it doesn't work. Yeah, but- if we're gonna continue with this feature, you've got to tweak them a bit, right? <laughs> People have got it, we've had loads of emails, more than ever. So, do you know what I mean? Let them decide. Mm. If they don't like it, they won't email in, but they lo they're loving it. They've right? all come from the same institution. Uh, <laughs> go on. He'll fit some chocolate to your feet, that was A, that was Aerosmith. Right? Aerosmith. You've yeah. heard of a blacksmith. But a smith is just yeah. a workman. It doesn't uh, necessarily- no, no, you can have anything, you can have a locksmith. You... A smith doesn't just mean it does yeah. shoes. Right, do you think- you... Aero Cobbler oh. would have worked. Unfortunately, there isn't a band called Aero Cobbler. Get ready, get ready with a winner. Um, do you think your kid will, uh, get that strawberry for me? That's Wilson Pickett. <laughs> <laughs> Wilson Pickett. <laughs> you got a I'll give you that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have to say that I don't know if these guys have won in the past, but they were the first people to email in. These, I mean, normally I just give it to anyone, but these guys, literally, you've given How the clues, Carl. I'm amazed. Everyone seemed to get Aerosmith. How? Everyone got D Light. Everyone got Wilson Pickett. I, I'm absolutely stunned. I, I just, I, you know, they deserve it. They deserve the junk. <laughs> Prizes. <Right. laughs> so we'll give it to Jonathan and Louise, who, as I say, may have won in the past, but as I say, they were very, very quick. You've got oh. to beat them if you want to win. Yeah. Uh, and they're from Wrexham. Brilliant. So good luck to them. So that's I hope that, they then. enjoy uh, Jerry's yoga diet. Back next week, then. Yeah. See you later. See ya. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.
Welcome to number two in this uh, second series of the Ricky Gervais Show. With me, Ricky Gervais. Hello. Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Well, uh, I've been away. Um, I had a little bit of a an express tour of uh, America, um, LA and New York, and uh, they're all talking about one thing out there. Carl Pilkington. Really? Yeah. Um, I, I hooked up with the Simpsons lot. They all listened to it on their their iPods. I went down to the American office to keep an eye on, you know, things. Yeah, check, check it, check it. Well, as we get money for old rope yeah, for doing yeah, next yeah, to nothing, yeah, yeah, I thought yeah, I'd yeah. show him a face. Yeah. They're big fans, Carl. I, I met up with Jason Bateman, you know, Arrested Development, and uh, he knows how stupid you are. David Letterman knows what an idiot you are. Mentioned on the Letterman show. I mean, unbelievable. David Bowie listens, and they're all listening to little Carl Pilkington. I think... When I think of people like that, like, like pretty much geniuses in their yeah, field. Yeah, sure, yeah. But uh, when I think of Bowie, listen to it, I still think of him as 26, dressed well, as... Well, he's dressed as Ziggy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah With a pair like... of those big 70s headphones. <laughs> yeah, and he's going, hey, Mom, can you turn the TV down and listen to Pilkington? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I love his kooky outlook on life. <laughs> uh, and, uh... Christopher Guest. Now, Christopher Guest um, empathises with you a little bit because obviously everyone else sort of knows how stupid you are and not understanding concepts like you know the infinite amount of monkeys. But he empathises with that because he thinks that sometimes he he thinks that he sometimes doesn't understand concepts that uh, seem obvious to other people. However, um, I think he's being polite. I don't think you've got a lot in common with him because he did all that other genius stuff. You know, what you did was do the washing up with your pants pulled down slightly. You know, it didn't have the same effect to say. It's not been as influential as Spinal Tap. Oh, wait, for Guffman. <laughs> no, no. I mean, unless people, uh, maybe that's sweeping the nation now. Maybe if someone sees someone nude in a room opposite their house, they immediately they get, get their cock out. They go genius. That's genius. Well, I did a, uh, uh, an appearance at the Oxonian Society in New York. It's a Princeton College uh, run event, and they have like academics, artists, political figures. They have uh, heads of industry. They had world leaders. They've had Prince Hassan uh, of Jordan, and there was a Q and A afterwards. And one of the questions was, "Is monkey news coming back?" Yeah. In that sort of forum, mm. I mean, it's, yeah. it's. I believe they also asked that of uh, Bill Clinton. <laughs> they did, yeah. Now, Carl, is, is monkey news coming back? I mean, maybe it depends what goes on out there. It's gone a bit quiet, hasn't it? <laughs> on the man, what on the monkey front? <laughs> yeah, that, you know, that I don't know if they're aware or whatever that it's being covered, but it's just like, you know, <laughs> there's no point, you can't make news, can you? All these news channels, that's the problem with it. They've committed to saying we're a news channel, you got to find news, well don't do it like that. Sure. I'd say put something else on, if now what's going on Cartoons. in the world. Cartoons. Just, just... Is there just, often no news in the world, on the planet Earth with six billion people? Is there ever a day when they go, no, nothing? But, but I'm just saying, the news is... Uh, how, what, what is it, about half an hour long? It depends! There's news channels what, that are 24 yeah. hours. But yeah, you're thinking of one specific news programme that's on in your house. Yeah, but I'm just saying it's half an hour. How much of that? No, well, no, hour? no! You look again! You, again, you don't, you, I've told you that not all news programmes are half an hour by definition, but you go anyway, it's half an hour. Again, you didn't listen to me. Why do you think all news programmes are half an hour? They're not. I'm just saying. Uh, how much of that do we actually need to know about? But we don't need to know about any news. There you right? go. I mean, a a outside sort of dangerous situation. It's interesting. It's, it's entertainment. People want to be aware. People want to be hooked up. I mean, I, I don't, um, uh, you know, watch the news much or read papers. But it's funny when I'm away, I do. I suppose it's because you want to feel connected with with what's yours. It's that feeling of being part of society, isn't it? No, but there's there's places. Say like there's places where they don't have telly, right? And they're not watching the news. They're still getting on with life. Yes, they are. And yeah. they're bogged down with their own problems, which is the way it should be. Say, like at the moment, I've got a leak in the bathroom. Right? Have you? It's doing me head in. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I put the telly on to get away from all that. And then you put the news on. They go, oh, "There's a you know bad weather in what's it?" You go, "Oh, don't tell me that as well." I like it when you hear about inventions that are coming out or you know uh, stuff they're doing in science. But you uh, but you told me the other day that you thought. Everything that needs to be invented has been invented. Something they said in 1900. But, uh, so what do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, they are sort of playing around now. Like, they've, they've said they've made, uh, like a, a heart now that can be bunged into a body if yours isn't working and keep you going. But why is a, why is a heart that you can bung into someone to save their life, why is that a bad thing? 
Just because it's another thing, isn't it? That's- we're meant to die from- from the year dot. Uh, things <laughs> live, you have your bit, you knock about, and then you die. If you're gonna <laughs> live forever, how do you plan stuff? Right? That's the way I look at it. Sure. You sort of go- How big would your diary well, be? Well that diary would become intimidating, wouldn't it? This is what I'm <laughs> saying. You have to, you have to fill that in for the rest of eternity. And you, and you get bored. You get bored with living forever. And, you know- But I agree with you. You get bored of people. You'd have to keep making new mates, wouldn't you? Because you've I've discussed everything by the time you're about 110. <laughs> <laughs> 110?! So, it's kind of like- Carl, you have the same concepts that you worked out and decided that were true at about 10, I think. I look at life like a- like a Box big book. Shoppers, like a big book. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. Right? And, you know, sometimes you get halfway through it and you go, even though I've been, you know, I've been enjoying it, I've had enough. Um, Give us another book. No, 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 what? no. Your metaphor, analogy, whatever you're, you're trying to create there, falls down with let's have another book. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. You, you can either opt out of life or stick with it till the end. You can't go, ah, be someone else now. You can't do that. I know you think you can. And I think in your world you can, you know, you possibly be injected into an old woman's head <laughs> when you've had enough and you come out a little baby. What I mean is, at the moment, you know, my life, uh, I'm going to live to 74, 75, okay, right? Okay. Right. So yeah, I'm probably on page, what am I on? A, a book that's got about 200... <laughs> this is painful, Steve. This is really painful. Come on, sorry, I'm, carry I'm, on. I'm on, I say if my book's got, uh, 300 pages in it. <laughs> yeah. <if> you, <laughs> few pictures and that. Um, <laughs> it's a picture book. That's the great thing about Carl's life. I, it's, it's a, a book for children. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pop-up book. Yeah. <laughs> and it just, every page he pops in, he goes, <laughs> all right. All right. I'm probably on like page about 170. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna die at 74! Yeah. He's reading a book with a few pictures in with 300 pages and he's on 170. Go on then. So, right, if, if the book was too thick, right, and there was loads more pages Let me tell left, you, this book is way too thick. Yeah. <laughs> if the book was m more thick, yeah. <laughs> the book could not be thicker. If there was loads more pages left, I'd go, I can't be bothered reading on. Right. <laughs> okay. Let him finish the analogy. You must have known that when he saw the book. You do. We've got to finish this analogy, right. otherwise we're going to be here all Listen, night. Listen, he must have known how many pages there were when he got the book out of the library. Yeah, but the way they write books, <laughs> they're painting pictures more at the beginning. You're going, this is good, and then it it gets a bit boring as it goes on, doesn't it? Okay, well that works. So you're saying that you were you no, were young. No, it doesn't work. Well, no, you just well, accepted no. that that's what all books are like. No, but there's a little bit of poetry in that because he's sort of he's actually saying that you know, when he was young, his whole life was ahead of him. He couldn't wait the whole world, the promise that he was given of this world, and now he's he's, he's a bit jaded and he's more cynical, and he realizes that the world hasn't got uh, as much to offer him as he thought it was. Is that what you meant? Yeah. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> Well, Rick, you're not the only one who's been away. I know you've been off working, yeah. but I, at long last, have taken a bit of leisure time. Go on. And, uh, <laughs> you've probably heard of the Rio de Janeiro Carnival, only one of the, uh, the hottest, uh, you know, events in the world oh, calendar. Yeah. <laughs> imagine me down there. Oh, God. Rio, you can imagine, did not know oh, what hit it. Oh, God, oh my, imagine, were you like, uh, Paul the Party Animal Park? He would not have been able to keep up if he was with me. God, what did you do? Oh, what did you get up to? Oh, well, let me tell you right now, um, Day one, I almost drowned. Day two, I got a foot infection and spent the day in the hospital. And the rest of the time, I had diarrhoea. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's, the, that was a hell of a, that was a hell of a time. Carnival. Yeah, yeah. I did, uh, I was able to watch some of the carnival on TV. Oh, And my. it looked brilliant. It looked did amazing. It? Um, I didn't actually, I, it was difficult to make out because the TV wasn't actually in my room. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because in an effort to save money, I wasn't staying in a hotel, I was staying with a bunch of other people in some kind of, like, someone's flat that they'd let out. And, uh, so I had to look, I had to watch the TV, like, from my window, watching a neighbour's TV. And of course, when they change the channel, you know, often during the juicy bits, I couldn't see anything. And, um, so, but it looked really good. I'm bunged up at the moment just so I can get through the show. But I've just been on a 12 hour flight, and it is terrifying being on a flight when you know that any moment you could go. Because, you know, the problem is sometimes the toilet's free and sometimes then you've got to queue up. Mm. And the worst bit is that, that sort of half an hour just before you land, when they say the toilets are out of bounds now. <laughs> 
I tell you, I went twice before that in quick succession. The woman sat next to the toilet. She was, she didn't know what was going on. <laughs> the noises and stuff in there. And I was, because I was really oh. panicky. Oh, Christ. And, um, and so, of course, then on the whole flight, uh, as we're landing, I'm just, I'm really petrified because I'm thinking this could, I mean, I packed a pair of underpants and jeans in my, in my bag, in my hold all. It's just in case it all went. Oh, and I was no. really, because I hate flying anyway, and I hate landing because it's the most terrifying moment of the journey. Then it really was rumbling, and I was thinking, I gotta get out of here. Of course, you know, you know when you're in a hurry, everything's, suddenly everything makes you angry. The little old lady in front of me who's just hobbling along off the gangplank. Get yeah. out of my way! Yeah. Thinking, you know, just really, you know, with your, with your, with your bad hips and yeah, your bad and legs. Yeah, and your Zimmer frame. I know you've been through a war, but get out of my way! <laughs> yeah. And just anyone who could have even passes you, oh, you just, oh. And uh, so I, yeah, I managed to get there just in time got into the time and it all went off. Man alive, it was, it was grim. But th that was, that was not anything compared with the first couple of days, because the first day I was, I went for a walk, and of course Ipanema Beach is famous, I mean obviously the girl from Ipanema, one of the most famous songs in the world, and it's, Ipanema Beach is famous for just the beautiful, beautiful people that gather there, and it is extraordinary, I mean the people are remarkable. There's so many beautiful women in Rio, it made me angry, <laughs> I was angry that these women were so attractive and that, you know, none of them were even looking at me. <laughs> so, but anyway, I'm on the beach, because I, I was shopping and I needed a wee. Right, and we went for a quick impromptu swim, and I thought, oh, are we in the in Just the sea? Just think of him! I'm the beach, right, with diarrhea! Well, I'm wearing great big long shorts, because I'm not going to try and compete with these boys, because they and are- And you are, could I say this, the whitest man uh, yeah. I've ever met in my life. Yeah. I mean, with his shirt off, you can see his heart like a newborn fish. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, <laughs> well, this is the thing, as I went into the sea to have a wee, oh, there was a discussion about this. As I went into the sea to have a wee? <laughs> yeah, well, I was desperate for a toilet, and I, and I was shopping, and I, so I thought, well, I'm never going to make it back to the hotel. So I'll go in the in the sea and have a little swim and, and just swim. I see him straining, just like a cat in well, a litter tray. You see, there was a discussion about this because I'm very much of the opinion that you should take your trunks down. And some people, uh, some of my friends are saying, just do it in your trunks and let's see the sea just wash it away. What a hell of a carnival! Well, and I think that's I'm against that. I've always been against that. Against that in swimming pools, everything you know. So I so no, I think, I'm against pissing in swimming pools. Full stop. It doesn't matter whether you do get in, <laughs> take your trunks down or let don't piss but in what the swimming. The sea. Yeah, well, fine. Yeah, fine, okay. Right, fish, so, fish do it. So. so anyway, so I'm in the sea trying to trying to urinate, and I so I kneeled because I'm obviously very tall, so it's tricky to get deep enough for the water to to mask what you're up to. So I tried to kneel down in the water, right, and, and I got the I got John Thomas out, but then the water swept out again and just left me on the beach. <laughs> So, but luckily my, my back was to everyone, so no one saw. So, um, so I, so I, I can't think of a funnier sight than Steve Merchant on his knees with his little John Thomas out. I don't know how big it is, I've never seen it. Well, I, mean, I imagine this in proportion to the rest well, of it, is it? I no? wish. Um, this, all I'll say is I've been a little shortchanged. But, um, so I, so then I got up and I waded a bit deeper in, right? And, uh, now I was sort of, I was, I was trying, I got it out. But what I didn't realise is that the waves just off the beach are really just uncontrollable. You never know what's going to happen. So one minute they're calm, and the next minute they're crazy like a tsunami. So um, so suddenly I see this giant wave coming towards me, crashing towards me, and I got the cock out and everything, and it grabs this wave, comes over me, and lifts me up and flips me up in the water, right? And I'm floundering around. I can't see anything because, of course, I had to take my glasses off <laughs> to go in the sea. Because oh I didn't want, I didn't want to lose them. Oh God! So, so I, so I floundering around, and I'm wait, genuinely getting scared because I, as I try to get into shore, the wave just pulls me back again. So I'm waving to my friends on the beach, but what with I everything. Well, what I don't realise is that because I'm wearing my, because I'm not wearing my glasses, I don't realise that I've been dragged along the beach some way, and I'm not actually waving <laughs> to my friends. So there's like a bunch of these beautiful women on Ipanema Beach. <laughs> watching a pasty white man <laughs> waving with his cock out. And, and, and what annoyed me was my friends were laughing. And that Steve, really, really angered me. if I'd have been there, I would have burst. But why wouldn't you have come running, would you have come running in and helped me? Not with your knob out. What? So even though I was screaming and shouting? I'd have thrown a rope or something, or, or a dinghy or something. I'd have I, there's no way I'd have... No, I, I, I couldn't have saved you with your glasses off in your knob out. <laughs> when, if, I, if I ever save you, I want you to be fully dressed with your glasses on. <laughs> so you'd have just let me go. You'd have, that would have been what you'd said to my parents. <laughs> <laughs> he had his knob out and his glasses off, there was no way I was I gonna- I can't think of a funnier sight. Oh. Oh, chimpanzee, that is running it down again! <laughs> yeah, this is where we read extracts from Kyle's diary. Um, 
you, we've had to wrestle it from him. He's never happy, but you know that's the way it goes when you're doing a, what, you know a show as popular as this. And I'm going straight now to this entry. My man phoned and said that my Auntie Nora, ah, uh, classic Auntie Nora, wanted me to look on the internet to find out what the weather will be like in Spain at the end of November. I don't know where she gets her money from. Two months ago, she was asking me, Dad, how much it would be to get her back garden astroturfed because <laughs> she's sick and tired of the grass getting out of her. What does she want to do? Start a football team? <laughs> what does she want a back garden astroturfed? She likes the sort of green look, but she doesn't like the headache that comes with it, so she's just looking into getting that false grass put in there. Brilliant. Don't know how much it is. But. Went round to Ricky's and had some chicken curry that Ricky's girlfriend Jane had made. Ricky and Jane were going on holiday for a few days and had arranged for Glyn to come in and make sure the cat was okay while they were away. I'm sick of that cat. I was surprised that they hadn't paid for the little shit to go away with them on first class. <laughs> Blimey, getting a bit vitriolic in the uh, why diary. Doesn't he, uh, why doesn't he like the fact that I've got a cat and I, I love the cat? Why? why it's why just everything in that house that you've got gets sort of special treatment and it's a cat and it What do you mean you get me? special treatment? You, sometimes we put I, food I, down for it, and yeah. sometimes it gets uh, 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 on our lap and we stroke it. You don't what, just stroke it. We're you not massage it. it. You massage its back. You go, no, are you stressed out? Well, no, no it's out? good. It's, no, no, I'm not saying are you stressed out. At no point did I say are you stressed out. You <laughs> said, what the fuck are you doing for? Is it stressed out or something? I, 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 I like uh, touching my cat. To be honest with you, I don't like Ricky's cat. Oh, it, I can't believe it! Because it, this. every time I go around there, it goes straight for Magoolies. <laughs> yeah, instantly. You, yeah, he probably seen you in the sea and thought, <laughs> well, if he's waving it about, I'll have a bit of that. But it's like the lizard thing you've got. It's kind of, it's just sat there. You've bought it a big box, right, to be in. Right. One, one it's one. a salamander, right. so it's an amphibian. Yeah. It's not a box. It's a big vivarium. Yeah. But what I'm saying. And is as it, for, uh, and, and and if you're going to criticise someone for just sitting there uh, having a round head and doing nothing with its life, uh, people who live in glass houses, no, we've done this do one. You know, do you know what gets me though, right, Steve? When I was there, I was looking at it and I thought, is it dead? Right? Because he's just sat there. Like, <laughs> and then it was thinking exactly <laughs> the same fucking <laughs> thing. He sat there, not moving. Right. And then on the top of the box is like a box full of crickets and stuff. <laughs> That's it. It's, it's, it's food. Yeah. Right? But they were more active than the thing that it was gonna feed. <laughs> Get rid of the lizards, <laughs> keep them in there. More entertaining. <laughs> Don't understand it. A few months back, a girl who was having a kid showed me one of them scans of the kid that was in her. That's science gone mad, innit? I couldn't think of anything nice to say as it looked like a frog. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why we've got to that point? What? Why, why have we got to see something that, that young? Why? Because people can keep an eye on the progress of the baby in the womb. Yeah, but why are they printing it out and stuff? That's some, surely that's for a doctor to see. Well, that's just an added bonus for people who are interested in but such things. That's like saying, why do you take pictures of anything? No, because normally pictures are like, you know, you on, in Brazil, sat in the sea or whatever. You'd go, oh yeah, I remember that day, it was a good day or whatever. But- it Wasn't. It's just kind of like, why have you got to see something is, you might as well. Well, you just, you just to listen. Why have you got to see something that small? So why would you take a picture of Steve in the sea? No, but what <laughs> what I mean is, why? At what point are we going to stop? Are we going to start sort of X-raying the fella's testicles and saying, well, there it is at a really young age? <laughs> Well, <laughs> where, where, where are we gonna stop? It's because, it's just horses for courses, isn't it? Some people like to have a record of their baby in the womb. They That's like right. to show the baby. They're excited they about it. They All sit right, down yeah. and they, they show the friends the, the slideshow. There That's the birth. Oh, that's the conception. Oh, look, Ron's going a bit mad there, isn't he? But why do I need to see this? This is what I'm saying. It was an awkward situation because she was happy with it. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was an odd looking thing. I couldn't say, oh, it looks like you. Because that would be a diss. <laughs> Met Suzanne at Euston Station. I said I would sort out the tea tonight, so I called the curry house. The fella couldn't understand me. I asked for two popper doms. He kept saying, how many? I kept saying two. He still couldn't understand. I said, one more than one. He understood. <laughs> when we picked up the food and took it home, there were five popper doms in the bag. There is a restaurant somewhere that sells knobs to eat. <laughs> no, there's not. There is. No, there's not. No, there is. It says that women can't eat too many of them, and if you want a seal's knob for dinner, you have to book in advance. Right, it's gobbledygook. <laughs> this is the ramblings of a madman again. It's a trend, he writes. It won't last long. It'll be like hummus. <laughs>
But hummus, what, what, <coughs> when did that happen? What do you mean? It's still going. It's a Greek traditional food. I know, but there's one down the, there's a restaurant down the road that that's all they do. That isn't a proper, that's a side order, isn't it? That's like having a restaurant just flogging tomato ketchup. <laughs> hummus isn't a meal. They don't even try and kid you and get you in and flog you just hummus. They actually say it's hummus today. <laughs> Not gonna work, we shut down within a month. <laughs> Called Ricky and asked what the difference is between the mind and the brain. Yeah, he <laughs> That's did. a hell of a phone call. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Ricky did explain, but I can't remember what he said. I wondered at what age you are when the mind kicks in. Okay. Ricky changed the subject and said there is an island called Spider Island. There's nothing but spiders on it. A bloke went to visit the island and said there was a thousand types of spider in one tree. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't tell you that. No, I locked it up after talking to you. Oh, right. Is that true? Um, yeah, they just said there's, there's loads of them. What do you think about that? What do you think of an island that's just full of spiders? It's a, it's a bit, it's a bit daft, isn't it? What do you think they should do then? Um, I don't know, because y you need spiders. I, I don't know what they do, but they say a world without spiders, like, wouldn't, wouldn't be good. Who says that? I don't know, someone. But, but they sort of do, they do something, there's something about if you did get rid of them all, it would have an effect. Well, of course it would. Any, get rid of anything, it would have an effect. Mm, not, not everything, though. <laughs> like I've said, you know, jellyfish and what have you. Well, it, no. The world wouldn't change. Well, it would. No, it wouldn't. Well, it would, because it's part of an ecosystem, so they're, 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 they're something's food, aren't they? No, but the, it's, it's 97% water or something. Yeah. So, how much are they doing? Just g give them another three percent, make them water. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's more useful. <laughs> give them another three percent and make them water. Oh, God. The rain ain't stopped. The old woman with the bent neck. Now, we've not heard about the old woman with the bent neck Who's before. The old woman she's with a bent neck. Character. What's this? Incredible. She's, um, she's really old. And she's got a bent neck, yeah, but tell us something else. I don't know what's up with her, but her head sort of <laughs> comes out of here. But it's radio. We can't. They can't see what it you're sort doing. It comes out of a of a chest. So from behind, it looks like she hasn't got an head. <laughs> it's really weird, right? I mean, she's old, and I don't know what's happened. Just Suzanne said it's sad, and her bones have sort of bent up or something, or maybe she carried something heavy when she was younger on her head. And you know, I, I don't know. It's sad and everything. Yeah. But she's just she she's wandering up and down the street. Always looks fed up, but you can see her. You have to sort of bend down a little bit. Mm. But. Our head's just, I thought, I thought I'd told you about it. She finds a lot of change. Yeah. I said, yes. Yeah. Well, as you write in the diary, the old woman with the bent neck is struggling in the weather. The rain must be running down her back. Don't know why she went out in this weather. Me back's doing me head in today. It does this every time the weather turns a bit grim. Ever since I tried to kick me height. <laughs> oh, I remember that. We've heard this before. Kicked me height and landed on me arse. <laughs> was going to treat Suzanne to a trip to the pictures to see Breakback Mountain, but then remembered there is a programme on about Two-Headed Kid tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what Two-Headed Kid? It's just a Two-Headed Kid knocking about. <laughs> and I just, just <laughs> wanted to watch that. <laughs> what would you mean, a Two-Headed Kid? It was, something on, it was something on the telly. I only saw the beginning of it. I thought, oh, it seems a bit heavy, this. The programme about the kid with two heads was a bit sad. They never go into the good sides of these stories. I asked Suzanne what happens if they sit an exam. She said she didn't know. So, Rockbusters, you gave out three clues last week. Have we got a winner? Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, this was the first person to email in, but you pointed something out, didn't you? That we're gonna do it this week, the first person, but we think maybe it shouldn't be the first person because some people are up in the world when this comes up and some people aren't up in the world. So, uh, um, we're just gonna pick one at random next yeah. week. So you've got the whole week, but we're gonna pick one at random. But this one is, this is the first one we got with all the right well, answers. That's the we first one with the right answers, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, um, well, give us the clues and the answers. All right, so last week's uh, clues, there was three of them. Uh, I give you an initial of an artist or a band yeah. and a cryptic clue. Yeah. Uh, you work it out, you email it and you win a signed picture and that. Yeah. Um, first one was, uh, well, I don't want a house that, that far away from the water. I want to be right on top of it. Go on. Right, so that was B. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, that, that was Beyonce. Be Beyonce. Like, yeah. it's like a cryptic thing. Do you got that? Mm. Second one. I stand. Um, Beyonce. Beyonce. That Beyonce. part of my leg is English. 
the initial was B. That was Britney. Right? Britney. Yeah, so it's like British. Britney. But so you only take, you're just taking the one half of her name, are you now? Well, she's known as that now. Mm. I think she's known I don't more know who as, she more is, as, but fine. More as Britney than okay. Britney Spears. They don't really call her that anymore. Mm. Yeah. Also, British isn't the same as English. Yeah, no, I know. I, I realised <laughs> that, but it was too late. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Brilliant. And That's what you're up against. Just like that, Ollie wants to be a millionaire. The last yeah. one was, uh, the initials were KW. Yeah. And the clue was, uh, the fitness teacher has got a speech impediment, right? So you've got to sort of think about that. You've got yeah. to think about a fitness teacher. Yeah. He's working out and that, yeah. but he's got a speech impediment. So yeah, when yeah. it when it like comes to like, well, no, you didn't, you didn't say all this in the clues. So. But no, well, but, well, but no. it was it was just that that one was Can Kanye West, right? <laughs> Kanye so, West. So I'm just saying. Why like, did you the know, fitness teacher say Kanye West? Because he's got a speech impediment and he's been he's been working him out. They built up a sweat and he's like, right. Well, no, you didn't say all that, so it doesn't matter. You but didn't, anyway, but even even if that is the case, so what is he saying? He's, he's saying, all right, can we can we rest now? As in, can we rest now? Yeah, just kind of because they say that at the end, it's like, right, everybody. So he's got a speech impediment. He's very very camp and he's adding words. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, but apart from that, it works perfectly. <laughs> so that is um, bollocks. You're an idiot. So that was uh, the first three. Who and, won? Uh, it was. Gwimlin Howe Jones. Right, let me have a look at that name. There's no such name as Gwimlin. <laughs> what is Gwimlin? <laughs> is it something from Lord of the Rings? Gwillem Hugh Jones. Okay, and uh, uh, a signed photo of uh, um, us is on the way yeah. to him. Lucky you. I don't know why he wants that, but uh, well done, he got the clue. I don't know if that's a good thing or not to get the clues, but there it is. Well, there you go. So, we're so, so we going to do some clues for next week? Yeah, right. Again, same sort of system. Uh, three of them email in and we'll pick one at random. Right, first one, uh, the initials RP. Right. Right. And, uh, the cryptic clue, uh. Not cryptic, well. Steal that woman's flower. <laughs> right? If you're gonna, if you're gonna, like, nick a. Well, no, it's different now. What yeah. is it? If it's a cryptic no, let, clue, let, let him finish it. Okay, what is the flower. clue? What is the clue and stick to it? Steal that woman's flower. Fine. Okay. RP. Right, okay. All right. Second one, B. Is, is that the, the clue or the initial? B is the initial, right? And, uh, cryptic clue, um, keep, keep whacking the cooker with a stick. <laughs> 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 what is it? It's a band or an artist. You kept whacking, you know, kept whacking the cooker with some sort what, of What, is it keep stick. or kept? What is it? it might, uh, if it's cryptic clue, everything matters, so. It, well, it doesn't really. Just, well. just think about whacking, whacking Well, no, no, give us the clue again. Just, okay. Just the, whack the cooker No, with no, what is the clue? Do the stick. clue. Okay, do the clue. This is the clue keep, and the only, right. Uh, but no, no, wait, wait, wait. The initial is B and the clue is? Keep wha whacking the cooker with a stick. Right, fine. But it doesn't have to be a stick, though. It well, could no, be no, like no. an eye. <laughs> it could be a, any sort of... Well, okay then, let's do the clue again then. Okay, so the initial's B, what's the clue? Keep whacking the cooker. Fine. The last one, uh, the initial M, and then the clue is, uh, Venice, it's, it's all water, isn't it? Right? How would you describe it, right, when- Oh, exactly. Jesus Christ, is this the one- is <laughs> Let this... him finish the clue! I wanna go home, I haven't slept, I've just come back from Rio! He might never finish the clue! It keeps- Oh, it's full of water, right? Oh, well, you don't need a stick, do you? Use your hand if you want. Well, no, no, it's B. No, 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 I mean, he might never finish. Well, let, he's right. not if you okay. ever interrupt him. What's the initial? M. What's the clue? Venice. Mm. It's all water. There's hardly any land, so how would you describe it? Okay. I think that sort of works. M. M is the <laughs> artist or a band. Email in, uh, podcast at rickygervais.com and we'll pick one at random. <sighs> Win some stuff. Well, that's the end of, uh, episode two in this, uh, second series of the Ricky Gervais show. So it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Oi! And... Sorry, I just, I just want to explain why that, that's a greeting in, uh, in, in Brazil. Is it? You see someone, hey! Oh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't just a meeting. Why's your knob out when you're shouting and waving yeah, at me? Yeah, that's why I didn't let you see what was going on. I'm Carl Pilkington. Alright. Hello, welcome to number three in the third series of the Ricky Gervais Show. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. And of course, Carl Pilkington. All right. Had a good week, Carl? Uh, all right, just, just boring. It's a boring week. It was that, that sort of kidney operation I've had. Um, it's just affected my life in a big way. How are you now, Carl? Are you feeling better? 
Uh, better, better than it was last week. Because last week you really were not putting the effort in, were you? And it's your own fault. You know, you've got kidney stones, you don't drink enough water. I've yeah, no, well, that's, that's what I've been doing this week. Just drinking. That's, I mean, you, you said, what, what sort of week have you had? What have you been up to? That's what I've done. I've drunk water. <laughs> that's all I've been doing. <laughs> if there's a water shortage in London, it's because of that. <laughs> Honestly, just that's what you have to do. Can't, it's sort of, it's just boring. Just like a, a basking shark. Just sort of. <laughs> With its mouth open, just going through the water. Oh, Sick of it. Oh, he's led the life of plankton for have one you, week. Have you been able to do anything, or have you just been resting? Uh, it's best to rest, um, just because, you know, your body's still in shock, even though in the head, physically, I thought it was all right. Uh, the body sort of just acts in weird ways. Brilliant. Um, you know, it's a weird thing, isn't it? Like I said last week, you, you don't think about your body until there's something up with it. And then you panic a bit. And then you go, right, I'm going to look after it from now on. I've been given a second chance here. Uh, as I said before, this was not a life-threatening illness or operation. No, but it's, it's that same thing. The last time I had it was when I nearly choked to death on the Mr. Freeze pop. Right. Where I had that sort of, uh, what do they call it when you have like a second coming? Do you know what I mean? It's that sort of thing where <laughs> I you I don't go, think you're the second coming. No, but that, that thing goes... If you are, we're all screwed. You mean the second chance? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a second chance thing. Where, your life flashes before you, doesn't it? Yeah, but you get a... Uh, you suddenly feel kinder. Do you know what I mean? You, really? You, yeah, you sort of go, right, you know, that was a bit of a warning. Be like good, Scrooge? Be good to people and stuff. Yeah, a little bit. I think it's normal. So are you now a nicer person? You're given more generously to charity and the like? Uh, well, they haven't been out, so I can't do anything. I can't help anyone. Yeah. Go online. And but maybe, uh, you know, one Donate day... some money, all this cash you're in. No, I've given enough money away. Sick of it. But... um oh, it hasn't changed. So he hasn't changed at all then, no. But you've also got to be careful as well, because there's that thing of you can drown yourself uh, by having too much water. Yeah. Mm. So it's just getting that balance right of not having too much and filling yourself up. Mm. Uh, well, yeah, it's that balance, right, of uh, not uh, dehydrating and, uh, you know, be- becoming like a-, a desert jellyfish, like a little crisp, and drowning yourself. Yeah. You're right, it is a balance. That's exactly what you've got to I do. I don't know how you've managed it, Carl. It's very complicated. Yeah. No, but... I- what I do is I, um, when I'm thirsty, I drink, and when I'm not thirsty, I don't. Yeah, but the- that's the problem with me. Uh, th- whatever it is that's in your head that says you should have a drink, I don't really have one. <laughs> it's called a brain. It's called a brain. Yeah. It's the brain that tells you. <laughs> but the brain's never thirsty. I only think of drinking when I'm eating, and I'm not eating as much because my kidney's weird. I don't want to put any pressure on it, so I don't drink. So now, if I have it in front of me all the time, I go, right, I've got to have that. Yeah. So yeah, so I feel, you know, feel a bit better. Good. Just, uh, it's just been a long week because when you when you don't do much. It's just, you know, time doesn't whiz by. And normally your weeks are packed, as we know, with visits yeah. to the cobblers. Yeah. And... Well, it's just, like they say, isn't it? They say, uh... Following, following an ant. <laughs> exactly, yeah. You've got a hectic schedule. I know, but, I don't know how you fit it all in. But, you know, because I was close to death and everything... You weren't close to death! I, I've been thinking about, uh, you know, other people who've been in that situation where they're dying and what have you. And it's weird how, like, in a way... Do you know, like they say before you die, things to do? Yeah. I I've never heard that sentence before. I don't know if they say. Well, I've extrapolated from that. What you mean is there are certain things you should do before you die. Swim with dolphins, etc. Yeah. But in a way, because I've had such a boring week, it's been a long week. So if I was dying, don't go swim with dolphins because you'll love it and the time will whiz by and you go, oh, there's another day gone. Whereas I've been sat at home watching, you know, The Price is Right and stuff. And it's just like, oh, it's only four o'clock. Oh, this is dragging. So if I was dying, I'd go... Yeah, it's dragging, but I've got ages more left to live. Yeah, what's the point? But it's really about quality of existence, isn't it, when you're dying? No, but anyway, I'm just saying... Oh, OK. <laughs> been a boring week. But what I've been doing is going on the internet, oh, sort of learning stuff, of watching more documentaries about stuff. Yeah. Uh, OK, tell me something you watched on the internet, then. Uh, the thing that stands out the most, uh, there's this spider. Right. That a fella got. Um, popped it in like a little sort of bottle yeah. and uh, chucked in 80 ants and the spider right, just went mental and uh, I don't know if the spiders eat ants I don't know, I don't know if they do uh, but uh, he wasn't happy with them that they were there and he was just whizzing around um, 
sort of biting them, not eating them, just giving them a bite, and the ants would sort of just lie there, dead. Mm-hmm. And uh, the spider had this system of sort of going, right, I'm going to put the dead ones over there, and it was biting them, dragging them across, putting them in a pile, killing another one, popping it in the pile, and by the end of it, it made like a little pile of dead ants, and he was just there sort of breathing heavily. And that, that, that was amazing, because I'd never witnessed that before. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't see that happening, do you, normally? So you think that if people are, unfortunately, passing away, sort of visiting Disneyland or whatever, they should... they should Just learn stuff. Just sure, make, get on the internet and watch this spiders. This world is amazing. Attacking ants. Um, and just that thing of, you know, you, last week you were saying how good ants were and how they're brainy and they work hard and everything, yet none of them sort of... They didn't know what they were doing. There was panic going on. <laughs> <laughs> you watched them again, they were running backwards and forwards. And I've, I remember like seeing a programme about ants where um, they meant to sort of work together as a team. Yeah. And if they climb up a person's leg, um, that person stood on their house, say. Yeah. And they're all like, oh. There's um, a signal and they all bite at the same time. They all bite once. Now, yeah. if that had done that on that spider... Yeah. They sort of all go on it, and when they're all in position, one of them sort of goes no, and it bites, mm. and then it would it would do some damage. But there was none of that. Mm. And but you've seen things like the Towering Inferno, where even humans panic crazily and jump out of windows and things until Steve McQueen comes along and saves the day. So yeah, but you, at the end of the day, when you're in a Towering Inferno, you were there relaxing on holiday. So, of course, you're going to be relaxed, and it's, the shock of it's going to make you go, oh, I wasn't ready for that. I was sat here in my trunks. <laughs> whereas, sure. whereas that ant, ants should always be alert. Well, yeah. Any insect life should always be... Well, so for a human scooping up uh, 80 of them, putting them in a bottle with a giant spider. Yeah, but I'm just saying that's what insects do. Um, their life, they never relax. That's what's weird with an insect. There's no f- downtime, is there? <laughs> it's you wake up, you go and get the food, you build your house. That's what you do, so you're always alert. They shouldn't be sort of running around going, oh, what do we do now? That should be, that should be in them. I love that you're annoyed at these poor yeah. ants that were bitten to death. But also, they say they're clever. I was looking at it. If I was an ant, I would have just crawled under the pile of dead ones. <laughs> just sit under there, wait for the spider to go. None of them were doing that. They were all staying on one side and the dead ones on the other. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying that you know you're always sticking up for insects, saying they know what they're doing. They don't. Uh, uh, what, 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 where, yeah. Where's this come from? When have I ever stuck up for insects? It's you that's follow them, saying, saying they're brilliant and that, and ladybirds are right-handed, and Christ knows what. No, but you know, so I'd learned that. Brilliant. Um, you haven't learned anything. Le- there's nothing to learn from there's that. Nothing you learned from uh, that. Something about um, jellyfish uh, and uh, what else was there? There was this fella, there was a program on the telly about survival. Um, and a fella who, uh, he, he looks after elephants. And he's in this little hang glider, looking for an elephant that he's looking after. He has to keep a track on where it's going and all that. And one day he's saying, oh, I haven't seen the elephant today. And the fella's like, well, look, look for it tomorrow. He's like, no, it's best if I go and look for it now. Because it might go further away or something. He said, oh, I wish you'd leave it. You know, till tomorrow. So straight away you're going, oh, this is trouble. So he's going out in his glider, sort of at night. Uh, he's looking I for. I doubt it's a glider. I imagine well, like it's, a, like... it's a glider with an engine. It's one of a light like aircraft, then. Yeah. So he, he gets in that on his own. He's wandering about in the air, looking down. Um, like I say, it's loads of land. He's looking for one elephant. He's not having much luck. Anyway, I think he gets to a point when he goes, oh, I'm having no luck. I might as well go home. Goes to turn round. Something happens, the glider falls to the floor, crashes. Light, light aircraft. Light aircraft. Yeah. Yeah. That crashes, he gets out, he's broke his legs, um, done his back in, um, hurt his hands. I mean, he's in a bad way. And uh, he looks at the plane, and that's, uh, that's a wreck. Petrol's coming out of it. He's thinking, that's not going to fly again. And... Uh, he has to lie there, doesn't he, for like 48 hours or something. And in that time, everything's being chucked at him. He has a, a lion wandering around him. A scorpion walked over his leg. Some sort of dangerous snake went in his shoe. Yeah. Uh, what else is there out there? Some sort of bad ants. 
Um, just everything that's there that could cause a problem. Mm. He had it all in his life. I, I, uh, I haven't seen this, but I suspect there's a lot of conjecture <laughs> yeah. in this telling of <laughs> the it. Bad, bad ants. Bad ants. No, <laughs> just anything that you could think of mm. that's out there to cause you a bit of a problem. Camels. He got hot. He got so hot his lips fell off. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you have to have a lot of juice to keep your lips sort of how they are. Right. Uh, so that's the sort of state he was in. Yeah. 48 hours. And yet he survived in the end. Someone came and found him. And, and you that, thought that you were bored in. doing nothing? Yeah, no. Well, he didn't even have the internet. Yeah, but he had a lot of insects. What would you watch. do then if you land? If you landed, right? Supposing uh, we all land, right? We're shipwrecked. Okay, there's no food around. Um, but there's a chance we might be saved, like in a few days. We just got to stay alive just for a few days. Okay. Mm. Um, Steve offers up. His penis. For what purpose? Well, it's it's already you've torn it in the car in the uh, plane crash. Anyway, it's hanging off. You go, okay, listen, that lads, let's eat this. Let's go. This will go three ways. I should be so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine, yeah. I'll look for something else. <laughs> Because we're surrounded by water. Why are we eating knob? There's loads of fish and everything. There's more fish in the sea than there is stuff on land. <gasps> that, that was something else that I've read about, about how there's more sea life happening. There's loads more. What stuff. do you mean? Than what? Um, than stuff happening on land. Well, yeah, it's a bigger place, isn't it? Yeah, and there's more... It's, they're all coming further in because it's getting so crowded. Everything's uh, being pushed outwards. So we, we're going to get to a point where people won't go walking in the sea because there'll be something deadly just floating about on the on near the shore. Again, that's no information at all. <laughs> I don't know. There's yet. no information in that statement at all. Yeah, I said I said how the sea is so overcrowded that everything's being pushed to the edge. It's not overcrowded. It is. What's been? You mean things that are in the sea are being pushed to the edge of the yeah, sea? Yeah, because there's new stuff happening all the time. There's new creatures being made, they're changing quickly. They were saying how, like, I don't know, 50 years ago, jellyfish didn't even have a have a sting. That's rubbish. Try 50 million and you'll get closer to the truth. But, but what I mean is, in terms of, like, land, we all look the same, don't we? We've had two legs and two arms for ages. Whereas in the sea, things are changing at a, a really fast rate. So, like, jellyfish we're knocking about. The sea is a much more stable environment than the land anyway. What are you on about? Well, I'd have thought... I wouldn't have thought evolution is any any faster in the sea than land. Yeah, it is. Well, no, what, what's, where's the evidence for this? The well, I'm telling you now. I'm telling you how jellyfish have changed. And look at them. They and how have they, they changed then? So they did, 50 years ago they didn't have a sting. Yeah. Now they have. Yeah. Trilbys, they wore trilbys 50 years ago as <laughs> yeah. well. And they just spoke with a much more, you know, <laughs> refined <laughs> accent. Yeah. Just that, that is quite a lot though, isn't it? Because jellyfish are nothing. But like no, you've made that up. Are. That's not a fact. There's, there, there's no facts come out of this discussion. Not, not, oh, that's interesting. That you haven't said anything. Jellyfish oh. are, haven't changed in 50 years. No, they have. They've changed a, a lot in terms of... Well, they haven't changed in like, hundreds of millions of years, so I don't know what the 60s had to do with anything. I don't. I, I just don't know what what influence the Beatles and Mary Quan at, suddenly had on jellyfish when they because hadn't changed for hundreds of millions this, of years. With all this sort of loose free sex, you know, free love, <laughs> yeah. they were just going berserk. I know, yeah. There were no inhibitions yeah. amongst the jellyfish anymore. Things are, are changing a lot. To think that jellyfish, when they, were, when they first came out, they were nothing. Jellyfish are, are, are nothing, aren't they? They're just a blob. <laughs> so when they first came out, when they were first released, <laughs> and, new and, by Ron <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but what I'm saying is, even though they were nothing, they've grown to have a bit of something, <laughs> just to get by in a busy place. Which I is don't know what you're talking about. It's it, all uh, guesswork and it's conjecture. Not guesswork. I've been it's all nonsense. Week. I've been reading all this and watching stuff. Carl, you haven't learned anything. Mm. Well, that's not entirely true because he's obviously. Learned enough to have written a poem about some of these subjects. Oh, I love his poems. Are you getting into poetry now, properly? I really like it, yeah. Um, is Carl going to read this for me, Steve? If you want him to. I think so. I did one about my kidneys. What was it called? Uh, didn't have a name, it doesn't need it. Ode uh, to a Nephron. Right, I did two about jellyfish. Excellent. Uh, 
I don't like jellyfish. They're not a fish, they're just a blob. They don't have eyes, fins or scales like a cod. They float about blind, stinging people in the seas. And no one eats jellyfish with chips and mushy peas. <laughs> Get rid of them. <laughs> and then there's just a shorter one about a jellyfish. Um, it would be spiteful to put jellyfish in a trifle. Uh, so. <laughs> that's great that's really good because it's jelly he's 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 done us this yeah Steve. yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah, a really yeah. good poem it would be spiteful to put jellyfish in a trifle yeah. a little half rhyme yeah um do you want the one about my kidneys yeah uh for god's sake my belly ache the doctor said it's my kidney he said he's got a stick of tube up my knob. I said, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> For God's sake, knob ache. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God. I'm sort of mildly disappointed that they're quite good. Yeah, yeah. No poet's ever written about jellyfish and kidneys. It's great. Oh, God, I think you might have the market sewn up there. <laughs> it, is, it would be spiteful to put a jellyfish in a trifle. I mean, I'm, I'm both impressed and fascinated and worried by Carl's new literary outlook. Yeah. You know, we, we've said to him, we've, we've tried to make him appreciate the arts and poetry and... And uh, you know, uh, you know, explaining like what metaphor does and and symbolism and all that. But I'm worried it will backfire because what if he becomes clever and erudite and then we lose our little endless well of stupidity? What if mm. we lose our little shaved monkey? I mean, these podcasts without you know, it's almost like he were evolving into a human. I mean, you've actually. You've authored the book. Well, I have to say, I mean, without, at the risk of sounding like we're shamelessly promoting it, I've only just looked at the book today, because that's the first time I've seen it, The World of Carl Pilkington, and uh, I was very impressed by how legitimate it feels. I mean, it does feel like an actual well, book. Well, he's put so much work into it. I it, mean, he... He's I done mean, drawings, he's done extra thoughts and ideas, and it's very odd to think that that has probably gone now into the British Library, which I think is obligated to take a copy of every book published. Incredible. I uh, mean, let's be honest, it's not going to really... It's not going to be on anyone's bookshelf. It'll be on their lavatory cistern, possibly next to their bed. But nevertheless, you know, it's hardback and it's got pages. It's a real book. Yeah. Will you uh, now read some some great works? Will you read poetry at all? Or? Um, probably not. I don't like reading made-up stories because Fiction. life's life's interesting enough, isn't it? Right. If I'm going to read someone else's lies, I might as well make some of my own up and save me money, is what right. I mean. But you do read um, lies and made-up things, you just take them as the truth. Um, Most of the spurious facts and apocryphal tales and ridiculous stories that you read on the internet are, I mean, fiction. Yeah, but as long as it gets you thinking, then it really doesn't matter. Say, like, you know, I was telling you about the sea being full up, yeah. right? how there's too many fish in it and they're all being pushed out. Then, um, you know, it was saying about how the jellyfish is changing yeah. from a bit back just being a blob to now being a blob with stingy bits. You go, oh. And then... No, I don't. I think I wonder what he read. And I then, what he was reading then I'll think of what other things are in the sea. How are they changing? And then that's when I might do a poem about an octopus with two heads. <laughs> Because it's, it's got me thinking. So no longer am I just reading someone else's story, spending a full week reading some other story. I've read a little paragraph, and that's got me thinking about it. It's inspired you to make great art. With uh, an octopus with two heads. And you just think, yeah, that would work. You know, that's a good good way for them to evolve. They've got all the arms. Give them two heads. <laughs> They've got all the arms. And, you know... It would work, because like I've said to you before, it is one big head to make it two smaller heads. So it's just looking at science, looking at how things can move. It's on. not looking but at it's science. it's not looking at science. You then speculating on, a, on an octopus having two heads is of no value, is it, to anyone or anything? But there's people out there who are bringing out books who are writing stuff like that for sci-fi stuff. 
And I think why am I reading? But that's there? entertainment. Everyone knows it's not true. They're doing it to. But they do more than just say, "What would it? Wouldn't it be great if there was a if there was an octopus with two heads?" They then paint a world in which this octopus exists I and presumably causes some kind of narrative interest. I can do that on my own though, without. So know, what's the story of the octopus with two heads? It's happier in the end. Everyone likes happy ending. He's got company. But if that's not a story, huh? What? What? <laughs> tell us the story. What you made up a story about an octopus with two heads? No, I'm just saying. I've I've pitch I've thought about how the sea's changing. Mm. Right, what else is in the sea? Octopus. Right. What's an octopus like? Well it's just a big head with a load of arms. Right. How would I change that? <laughs> <laughs> I love this thought process. But it's not a story. This is not a story. It's not anything. It's just some thoughts you've had. It's not but a your story a story is there to make you think and, and have thoughts. But what is it that you thought? You've not... I don't see what, what you've thought here. I've just thought, yeah, that'd be all right. <laughs> I know, but... Well, like, like King Kong, then. That's only someone who's gone, oh, monkeys are getting better at stuff. Yes, but it has a story, doesn't it? They go in search... No, it isn't. It isn't saying monkeys are getting better at stuff. <laughs> that's not what it's saying. There's lots of themes, but that's not one of them. Monkeys anyway. are getting better at stuff. No, they're getting <laughs> yeah. better at stuff, the way they try to sort of... He tried to go out with a woman... <laughs> That's them moving on, isn't it? It's the monkey going, do you know what? I quite fancy her. And you know from the beginning, I mean, that is a story that you go, well, that relationship ain't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? I don't, I, I mean, I've not gone out with women who have quite fancied, but then they smoke, and you go, oh, that's enough to put me off. Yeah. So, when a monkey's that big, I wouldn't even, the thought wouldn't even pass my mind. <laughs> to go on a date. we could... This could work out. <laughs> Sometimes it's just, you know, relationships aren't made for each other. <laughs> now, that for a story, you, you, you wouldn't think it'd go past page one. <laughs> yet you're having a go at me because an octopus has got two heads. Which isn't that weird. When you look at them anyway, they, I mean, they must be the weirdest <laughs> thing knocking about on the planet. I'm not kidding you. I've never seen anything so weird. And yet... <laughs> he's angry because he's not he's seen anything so weird as not octopus so happy it's, it's not yet a story what's weird about it what's strange about an octopus with all the things that could why is it any weirder than a dog because it couldn't be further away from us a dog has got human eyes <laughs> <laughs> if, if a jelly honestly if a jellyfish had a pair of eyes like ours I probably wouldn't worry about him that much but, like I said to you, it's that way that they haven't got eyes, they're floating about. I can handle some fish. They look, they look like, because they've got eyes, you can make eye-to-eye -eye contact with them. <laughs> what are you a jellyfish, making? what are you looking at? It's a snidey thing, like I've said to you. <laughs> you can see, see a lot in eyes. Do you know what I mean? They say, I don't trust him. Why? It's his eyes. Jellyfish haven't even got any, and I don't trust them. <laughs> Whereas if it had them, maybe they'd be the odd one that I'd go, oh, that one's all right. Okay, Carl, I'm just going to throw an arm at you. Tell me how weird it is, what bits annoy you, how you change it, okay? A crab. I would have changed it. Yeah. Does it annoy you? Do you think it's weird? Um, they are weird, <laughs> but they're at that size where they can get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it suits him. Okay, um, good. Would have would changed anything? Um, in a way, you know, what you're saying about things not working, he can't walk forwards. So but, why hasn't something happened? Why haven't they said, you know what, these arms are too clumsy. We need to have them so they can slot away easier and we can pull them out when we need them instead of <laughs> clumping around with them. Because they do struggle. You see them struggling with their arms. Yeah, they're still here. They're still doing that. They still design that way. What's the weirdest animal? So you think the octopus is the weirdest animal on earth? Yeah. In terms of um, design and everything, and uh, if you lined everything up, say if I'd come from another planet yeah. and everything was lined up in a row, and they said, right, we're going to give you a crash course in what's knocking about on this planet. Yeah. And you go, right, go on then. And you go, this is man. Here's woman. Here's a dog. Here's a cat. Here's an octopus, here's a... I go, hang on a minute, what is this? <laughs> oh, he's only got a really dark animal! That jingle, of course, signifies 
another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. There was an animal in the paper today that I've never before seen. Jesus it's called an alpaca. They are gormless looking. The fellow who breeds them said they are easy to look after because they're used to harsh conditions because they normally live in the mountains. The problem with this is they will turn useless eventually, and then if we tried to bung it back on the Andes, they won't like it. It's like how people win these live like a star for a week competitions. They're not good for anyone. <laughs> okay. Do you know what I mean? If something's living somewhere... But he's not going to send them back to the back? Andes. He's presumably breeding them for something else. Yeah, but say if eventually, you know, the world's getting busy, there's hardly any room, and we go, right, what can we shift here? What's getting in our way that we can shift? <laughs> well, those funny-looking things came from the Andes. Bung them back. All right, then let's put them back. And they go, oh, they don't like it. They're not surviving, they're dying out. Why did we bring them here? Oh, it was closer. Yeah, but look, we've died out now of the... Sorry, this is not... This, this, is, not also no, this, this isn't happening. They're, they're angry about it, like it just happened and you're sick of it. None of this has happened no, yet. I'm just looking at how it will happen. <laughs> Leave them where they were. <laughs> but you're, like, you're getting angry about things that you're speculating on now. It's absurd, Carl. Not once have I read here about your anger about, about terrorism or international, you know, political injustice. Not once have you written about that. <laughs> Only about the fact we may send animals back to the Andes. I know, but just because it, it just annoyed me, that's all. They brought them here. Some fellas getting a load of praise because they brought this weird animal into the country. And yet, it's like, well, they were, they were on the Andes for a reason. Leave them there. It was happier there. I, I mean, I feel guilty when I open a bag and a fly flies out of it, and I think, where's that come from? What bag are you opening with bat flies? Uh, what bag? No, just when, like, you know, the bag I took the computer home in, a fly flew out of it, and I thought, when did that get in that bag? Where have I brought that from? And it's the same thing. It doesn't want to be somewhere else. It was where it was. And that's the same with this Palaco, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Great news. Get $25 cash back on the purchase oh, you just God. made. Sign it it's now. It's amazing. Wow. It really is the ramblings of a madman, isn't it? Some new sea thing has been found. <laughs> <laughs> There's no headlines on the news. It wasn't found by sea experts. It was found on eBay. Someone was selling it for a fiver. I don't see the point in buying something that you don't know what it is. What do you I, mean? What do you mean? It was... It was Someone's found some sort of shell with a thing living in it. Right. Um, they thought, oh, I've never seen one of these before. I can flog it on eBay. Someone bought it and then wanted to look after it, went to some sea expert, and they said, oh, I don't know what that is. That's 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 the story. It's just Great weird how now you can stuff's get up being to found on eBay. No, it wasn't found on eBay, though, was it? Purchase. Yeah, but that's where the specialist people sort of picked up on it. It's just weird that... I mean, all, all I was saying is I wouldn't want one. If you don't know how to, if it's a new creature, you don't know what what makes it happy. <laughs> when you get a kitten, you go stroke its head, loves it, right? And you can do that knowing that it's liking it. <laughs> if I had a little seashell, and you go, does it sit in water? I don't know. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You could end up doing more damage. So that's why I wouldn't want it. It's nice to have rules, and it? it's nice to know what you're doing with something. Well, as you write in the diary, it's like if an alien landed and wanted to live oh, with you. Oh, <laughs> as much fun as it might sound, it wouldn't be long before you got annoyed with it because <laughs> it wouldn't eat the food you gave it. That's what I'm saying, but I couldn't have a go at it because it might not like pasta. <laughs> <laughs> it might not. <laughs> Everyone likes pasta. Well, that's it for another week. I hope you've enjoyed this half hour of drivel. I mean... Some of the most stupid things ever said. I mean, it's like he's got a contempt now for the world. Like yeah. He doesn't care what comes out of his head. Learn can be frustrating, <laughs> can't it? You know, you, you, maybe I'm getting you thinking, maybe on your way home today you'll be going, yeah, octopus with two heads. And, and if you do that for five seconds, I've done my job. Good to have a job, innit? So, uh, from me, Vicky Gervais, goodbye. From Steve Merchant. Goodbye. And from Carl Pilkington. All right.